Hello, hello, everybody. How's it going, Yomu? Konpaku. Aaron W. Roto's hairy feet. Binusade. Jet 989. Get some spire up here. Star Blazin. Rackbar. Killer Sheep. Lintlock. Ozma Glacius. Tom, good to see ya. So, um, and just Blake, thanks for the 14 months. What do you call two pairs of pliers? Multipliers. How's it going, Japanese export? <clears throat> so, just to further uh, clarify what we were talking about very briefly before the stream here, Aaron W is asking about uh, 820 defect. Struggling with bloat because all my decks take too long to set up and then just die to an Act 2 Elite. So what I'm talking about with Creative AI specifically is that it allows you to have many powers, much setup, for only one card in deck. So a common problem I personally start to find around Act 2 is that um, I'll run into Triple Slavers, for example. They're attacking for 34 on turn 1. And my hand is something like Machine Learning loop, defragment, recycle, defend. And you just kind of fall over to that because you've got all this sort of setup and energy gain and many powers, but none of them actually do stuff right away. So you just, you just die. And what Creative AI lets you do is put all of the do later cards of the deck into one card such that you can have a deck that's one creative AI plus Glacier plus Ball Lightning plus, you know, Auto Shields and Leap and Cold Snap and a whole bunch of immediate impact, high value front load cards. And then just one or two power cards to scale it all, not going over the top by adding individually many separate defrags and a capacitor and loops, which takes many turns and many energy to play, just as it does if you play it via the creative AI. And instead, just trying to have a higher baseline than the other defect decks and, and make up for it with a gradual, inevitable scaling in the form of creative AI. Now, one creative AI on its own is not a guarantee of anything, really, but it, it can really, really make the difference in quite a few fights. But again, it's it's key to use the the high end provided by the creative AI in order to invest in more front load. And I think Ironclad has something kind of similar in demon form, which is unlimited upward scaling over time at a high upfront cost that you can pair with a really well refined boiled down deck. Check the run history to make sure the streak. Sure. Here, I'm just we played a couple of other characters, so I'm just gonna set it to wins and losses, the ironclad. And that should clear this up pretty cleanly here. So one run with Runic Pyramid. Two run with fossilized helix. Three run with fossilized helix. Four run with runic pyramid. Five run with both fossilized helix and runic pyramid. Six, run with Runic Pyramid. Seven, run with First Relic Dead Branch. And eight, run with Fossilized Helix and Dead Branch. And Brimstone. And then we died to Collector nine runs ago. So there's our eight runs. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of the same couple relics in here, which is just fine by me. We might even continue to see them. But are relics important? Excellent question, Deathraw. Mummy Hand Corruption work wonderfully together because, no, the corruption kicks in first, and so the Mummy Hand will always hit another power or attack in your hand, which you can use to target certain high-cost cards. Pretty powerful. Yeah, corruption takes place first. We've also had a, a lot of Juggernaut decks, uh, relics aside. If it's not a ceramic fish streak, you're not interested. Wait, how many of those do we have? One, two. 
Uh-oh. That's not very many ceramic fish. Concerning. Maybe we'll find first relic ceramic fish in our first ironclad run today. We're going to go for run number nine in a row here. Might be easy, might be not at all easy. Let's take a look. Hoping for not too, too hard. That's an acceptable starting option. So is that one. This could be ceramic fish. Let's take a look at the act layout. Early shops galore. Practically mandatory. Although not actually. What about the elites here? Okay, not too bad. And a hexagos dact. I think Hexaghost is the best act to boss swap in. So this could be a boss swap too. Actually, Hexaghost is also the best act to take 18 damage up front. So maybe they'll take 18, choose a rare card here. That's less risky than swap. Yeah, Faily calling swap into crown that will give really good rewards. Wait, what? No, you can't call that. That's illegal. Aaron W says, in 20 runs, how often do I think Juggernaut would play a role? My expectation would be probably just one, but we've already exceeded that. Uh, father figures. Got two waffles. It's as many as two ones. Horse lover hat. Thanks for the prime sub. Oh, that's right. I'm not your real dad anymore. So, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Horse lover hat with two months of the prime sub. 18 health could easily be feed. It could also easily be immolate. It could also easily be juggernaut. Zyathin, thanks for the Prime sub in the nine months. There's quite a few ironclad rares that are very good floor one. What would the hierarchy be here? Feed is number one. What's number two? Is it Offering or Fiend Fire? It's got to be one of those two. Two and three are Offering and Fiend Fire, whatever. Um, Immolate's probably number four. Bludgeon five? Groove Snore, thanks for the Prime sub. The full metric year. Do I ever take the boss relic? Sometimes, yeah. This is a situation where I think you could reasonably take the boss relic. I have trouble making Fiend Fire work early. Not Just not enough cards in your hand. Even if you just look at it as uh, two cost, deal 28 damage with your whole turn. That's a pretty good deal. And then upgrade it immediately so it does 40 damage with just the base five cards. And that's enough to kill Gremlin Knob and Lagavulin pretty easily. Fist of Rage with the Prime sub and the 54 months. Cross up MK gifting his sub. Heck yeah. Subsass, thanks for 200 bits. Yeah, the only fight where you really have to think about not playing it immediately is maybe sentries, because you don't want to just destroy your entire deck in order to kill one of the sentries. But most of the, most of the other threats are easily enough taken down. To the Zeknar rare card start tier list. There you go. Somebody's made a resource for this. Let's let's choose a rare. Let's see what our actual options are. Oh yeah, Reaper. I forgot about Reaper. Reaper is also pretty up there. I think Reaper is above Demon Form. Brutality is probably also above Demon Form. Interesting. All of these are fine. Well, maybe not fine. I'm not sure how I feel about Demon Form on floor one, actually. I don't think it's that good. But I think Brutality is better than skipping, even turn one. Demon Form solves our boss. In a way, that's true. That is true. Am I willing to take it on floor one, though? I don't think so. Especially not when I can have a Reaper instead. Let's take in Reaper here does a little bit of damage below par, quite frankly. So actually, we won't be allowed to play the Reaper in most fights. Or even if we do, we'll have to take an extra turn of damage. But the healing from the Reaper can mitigate that pretty well. This will give us a very good excuse to take up any strength card we see. Is Reaper good enough without strength synergy? I think so. I think so. Also a good reason to go to an early merchant, perhaps. With a Reaper, what's my preferred pathing here? Hmm, maybe that early? Not sure about the Burning Elite. I think I like going to this fire, perhaps. That would mean missing this fire. 
Best option's probably this one, actually. This gets three rest sites. If I go to this elite, then we miss out on the extra rest site. And then from here we can go either way. So that means we look for a strength power here. I guess Inflame is really the only option. Might be a waste of a shock. I don't totally dislike it, though. It's our only reasonable option if I want the extra rest site. How's it going, Sergeant Beatstick? Thanks for 21 months. And Scragganoth with 32 months and the good luck wishes. Tash says, does a rotating streak have to go in a certain order of characters? Conventional order is Ironclad, Silent, Defect, Watcher, because that's the way they're laid out on the game interface. But I don't believe it matters. You could do reverse rotating or... Um, some other character order. As, so long as you kept the order the same each rotation, I don't think anyone would take any offense to it. Alphabetical order. Yes, uh, Chuikso. When you go to a shop node, the contents of the shop are loaded as soon as you enter the floor. So you might as well look at the shop, even if you have zero gold, because um, those I items are all going to be out of the relic pool anyway. So there's no reason not to look at the shop, basically. Let's go Reaper here. Am I sure about this? Could just skip for an extra fight here. Maybe that's the better option than going to a shop with so little money. Hmm. Could remove at the shop, though. With the Reaper, I really don't mind the extra combat. Seem, uh, it, you know, the five slime for Gremlin Fighter, quite a bit of opportunity for health. And would let us get the deck built better. I think more card rewards is probably a good idea. Let's, let's not go to an early shop at all, I think is the conclusion here. Shop for Hexaghost, huh? Okay. It's a little ambitious, but I think it'll work out. In one-on-one -on -one fights, particularly Jawworm here, I think we have to ignore our Reaper for the most part. If it lines up, that'd be cool, but we have to push a lot of damage against this enemy. Lest they scale their strength, which is something we can't do. Hmm, that's rude. Might as well play Bash, though. Okay, there's the buff turn. Should be able to kill next turn with a decent draw. What, nine block? Yeah. So Bash Strike does it. Cool. Can't do Strike Reaper. That's fine. For minus five against Jawworm. That's eh, pretty typical. Get 20 gold to start, and our choice of Reckless Charge, Shrug It Off, or Intimidate. Interesting. I could definitely go for a Floor 1 Reckless Charge. Shrug is curious as well. Evolve would be an easy snag against Hexaghost. Whatever, I'm me. Thanks for gifting two subs. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. To Sindace and Shotgun Joey. Thank you, thank you. Let's go Reckless Charge. This will add to our upfront damage output. Could make it easier to play the Reaper, too. Yeah, I like the zero cost card along with the multiple two cost cards. Drug's a little harder to afford, though it is good in the short term. Pick a Reckless Charge. Yeah, it's nice zero cost damage output. And the status generation can be pretty important, actually. Maybe Reaper next turn? No such luck. Relatively bad for order, unfortunately. Choo-choo, Twitch Shed. 
Oh, what is this? Sadness is what this is. Maybe this is Defend Reaper Reckless Charge? That seems reasonable. Rather than playing Bash. So that would do 11. So three strikes would still kill. Yeah, we're good. We're likely getting debuff next turn anyway. Yeah. Okay. Health is fine. Okay, Battle Trance. Now we're talking. Always good to have a Battle Trance in a Clyde deck. The earlier the better, quite frankly. Can I talk about the difference between Reckless Charge and Wild Strike? So, Reckless Charge has two primary advantages over Wild Strike. One is that Reckless Charge is zero cost, so you don't have to pay energy to play it. It does less damage, but the fact that it's free often makes up for that. And then you get a status card that automatically exhausts itself. So if you're doing any sort of exhaust interactions, like Feel No Pain or Dark Embrace, you have one less step required to benefit from those. Um, and if you are unable to deal with the statuses in any way, shape, or form, for example, right here, we're just using it as a, it as a damage add, in that case, then, the days will automatically get rid of themselves rather than being redrawn over and over again like the wound would be. So it's cheaper to play and the status effect is more convenient both whether you can use it or whether you can't use it, basically. So it's way better, is the short reason, is the short answer. It's just way better because it's much more convenient on several fronts. Mm -hmm. How much better is Wild Strike with first aid kit? A fair bit better. Although I'd still, again, prefer not to have to pay the energy for the, uh, with the status. Or I'd rather have a uh, power through, of course, which is just insane with medkit. I want those wounds to go straight into your hands. You don't have to pay draws for them. I guess we could go this way, too. Hmm. Cultist! Uh, maybe I get to use a six damage Reaper next turn. If we're really, really lucky here. Oh, looking good. Yeah. Reaper defend Reckless? Let's do it. Give me that health. Although it's 19. 19 we can't do in one turn. I think that's fine, though. Actually, we could technically. Here's our first fight where we actually gained quite a bit of health. We got six from the Reaper plus six from the blood, and we only took two, so we gained 10 here. Went from 43 to 53. Pommel Strike versus Anger, also a really good reward here. Um, I like Pommel Strike to draw into the Reckless Charge or the Dazed a bit more consistently. Anger is kind of good with Battle Trance, though. That said, we already have a zero-cost attack, so I don't necessarily want too many more of those. I think I'd rather take Pommel here. Yeah, let's take a Pommel Strike. Okay. That's not quite what I wanted here. From floor five, four. Slime and looter. Hmm. We're not really planning on going to a shop this floor, so we could allow the looter to leave. The mugger, or whatever the name is. Yeah, you're the looter, actually. Yeah, looter. Could allow the looter to leave. Maybe even gain some health with Reaper, and then just focus on killing the Spike Slime. I think that's kind of reasonable. Our coupon combat is not what you want to see. Well, there's a lot easier. If we were just fighting Looter, for example, without the Spike Slime at it, this would be a much more reasonable combat. But uh, he did bring a friend. So losing 40 gold is an option here. Otherwise, if we try to kill the looter first, it's more like health that we'll be losing. Right now, health is more valuable than gold. Battle Trance first here. Okay, we do draw a Reaper. Interesting. How much damage is Bash Pommel Reckless? That would be... 
8 plus 13 plus 10. 31. So we can actually kill the Spike Slime right now. Or we could set up the Looter to die next turn. If we go Bash, Pommel Strike, Reckless on them, then 31 brings them to 19. It would have to be a 3 strike draw to kill. That's kind of iffy. Whereas if I kill the Slime right now, I don't become frail, then I can just block while the Looter does their thing. This is frail that this one adds. The gray slimes add frail, the green ones make you weak. I'm gonna go for the face tank 11, kill the slime route here. Get one dazed in the draw pile, but that's all right. Probably double defend on this turn, yeah. That's exactly what we do. Um, and then if this nerd is blocking on this turn, then we probably cannot kill them. Whereas if they're attacking us on this turn, we have to take some more damage, but now we have a reasonable chance to kill them before they get away, especially if I draw Bash right now. Yes, I think we have them. Uh, they block for six? What is this? Six? Yeah, six. Can I play Reaper here? We could do 13 plus 18. No, that won't kill. We need to play Bash Pommel here. And then we can try to Battle Trance to redraw into Reaper, perhaps. We're really lucky. I think Reaper Strike is a kill. Luck, though. But we do kill. We at least do get our money back, even if we lost some of our health. We also get a Fear Potion, which is going to make our upcoming Elite a little bit easier. And now that we have some added damage, I really like a Shrug It Off. Deck with a Battle Trance and a Pummel Strike also kind of likes an Armaments, being able to upgrade other cards. But Shrug has a higher base value and just draws one which makes it pretty appealing to me. Sleepy Luna, thanks for the prime sub in the 23 months. Big Bad Bulk Boken just lost a pain double rupture run to the heart. I've done that before too. It's a pretty tough matchup in the heart fight, that one. You really don't have a lot of health to spare for self-damage when the heart is hitting you so hard. Yeah, I think we're on the right route here. Could go to this shop. Actually, let me... There's another option here that I hadn't considered, which is... Let's mark this in gold. Shop, fire, elite, into burning elite. It's an option. That gets our burning elite act one. Let's us look at a shop that we could potentially even afford a common relic in. We lose one upgrade. But we get the Burning Elite done. Hmm. This feels like the sort of run where I don't mind doing the Burning Elite in Act 3. We get to Act 3 with this Reaper. We're going to be having a good time. What's that upgrade going to go on? We could upgrade Battle Trance. It does sound like a good upgrade. Any Strength card I find, but we only have a couple options for that. Hmm. I'm going to keep on Green Path here. Oh boy. Not the event to find. I think this is only a one-click situation. Although we could use the extra site to rest, actually. Hold on. And now with the rest site run in front of us, we can actually click a few times for a relic here. Three, maybe four. And I rest here. Kind of like being able to dig when I didn't really have a good upgrade. Yeah, I'm, I'm cool with that. Oh, it's also completely free. <laughs> Objectively wrong to skip here. Plus two hit points. Easy game. Hmm. 
Hmm. Did I ever upgrade Reaper? This upgrade gets slept on a little bit. One damage, yes, it's pathetic, but, you know, Pommel Strike upgrade is also only one damage. You get one more draw, sure. Um, but more importantly, it's one healing per target. So this could be three damage, three healing against three targets. Which can definitely add up across many fights, right? It's, it's, it's not as bad as most think, I suspect. That said, I think I want to upgrade Battle Trance first. Get the Battle Trance upgrade over the Pommel upgrade. Maybe the Pommel upgrade's just better. It does get one more damage, and it's actually two more when Vuln, which matters a fair bit. Sure. Another tough hard pool fight. Spooky. Very spooky. Strike, strike, defend? No bash? Feels like a no bash situation. My face? Okay, Jetworm is attacking next turn. I feel like a pretty good fear potion moment, I wish. Get Battle Trance and Pummel, so I can get at least 13 blocked pretty easily next turn. Maybe not at least, but get blocked pretty easily next turn. We could even Pummel the Louse? No, that's worse. To draw five here. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Now we're doing good damage. Double Fear Pot. Second Pummel Strike. Sure. I'll take one more Pummel Strike. Pretty good damage. How's it going, Bruno or... Ah, Bruno or Win? Thank you for four months of support. I like our start here. This deck is missing Strength as a stat, but uh, that's about all it's missing right now. I really like what we can achieve, otherwise. I think Lagavulin is our first elite is not too bad. Uh, next turn you wake up regardless. I'm thinking Fear Pot into Bash Pommel Strike here. But only the unupgraded Pommel Strike, because I don't want to shuffle the deck without Battle Trance here. No, Bash first. No, no, no. Fear Pot first. Wakes up regardless. So yeah, the Pummel Strike Plus does two more damage, but then we're shuffling the deck by overdrawing the draw pile here. So we're shuffling without Pummel Strike or Battle Trance, which feels pretty bad. So I'm going to sacrifice two points of damage to make sure these cards go back into the draw pile so that we can draw them again here. Yeah, so now we get to Battle Trance. It's important. Time your reshuffles. It matters. Matters quite a lot. Definitely play this. We really need to push damage here. Feels like we need to strike. Uh, with Vuln, I can reasonably do, what, like 27 next turn? Then we're debuffed. Yeah, in order to get a kill before we get attacked again, I'm pretty sure we have to strike at least one more time here. Okay, we can do triple strike plus reckless, bringing it down to 10. Uh, 
Alright, looks like we maybe could have defended, but at least we get to refund three of that health with a Reaper. That's good. That was pretty good. Happy enough with that. We get War Paint to upgrade two random skills. We're offered a Heavy Blade. Hmm. I do want Strength badly enough that I'm kind of willing to take a Heavy Blade. Not very good otherwise, but I have enough card draw. I don't think it matters too much. I'm going to grab this. Upgrade Battle Trance for free. Okay, what do I upgrade at the fire then? Hmm. Letter Opener. If you play three skills in one turn, we'll deal five damage to all enemies. I guess I can upgrade Bash for the Hexaghost fight. That doesn't seem too bad. Humans Who Live with On Earth says, I've definitely come to appreciate early Heavy Blade as a, quote, just in case things work out with Strength card. Could upgrade the other Pummel Strike. That's a reasonable choice, too. We could upgrade Bash here, maybe. We don't ever have to upgrade Bash. I do want upgraded Bash for Hexa, though. I'd rather upgrade the Bash first and the Pummel Strike second. Could upgrade our health. Entirely reasonable. I don't think we need a health upgrade for this. Might do it here. I'm going to upgrade Bash. What character usually benefits from Letter Opener the most? Silent, sometimes Defect. But yeah, Silent Slash Defect are definitely the best at spamming skills. Defect in particular has a lot of zero cost or energy generating skills. Eat max health for Golden Idol, huh? Mm, I'll do it. I'll do it. Big price. Don't take 28 here. Yikes. Eat max is fine. Get 25% more gold from here on, my, here on out, which can pay for itself pretty quick. Ooh, that upgraded defend, though. Lucky. Lucky war paint. Seven, that would split it. So we don't do that. Double eights. Probably can't get back around a Reaper, but we'll see here. Actually, there's a chance here. We can full block this with Shrug Defend. Um, basically, any attack is a one shot, so we don't need to be too aggressive here or anything. Yeah, we get to play Reaper, gain four health back. Good. Well worth just a little bit of patience there to see if we can regain something. All right, Fire Breathing. Are we sufficiently afraid of Hexaghost that we need Fire Breathing here? And I think the answer is yes. Yes, we are. It does work with the Reckless Charge. We also have a ton of card draw, so we're able to redraw the burns very often. Yeah, lots of yeses in chat. I think this is indeed our Hexaghost answer. Would have strongly preferred an Inflame or even just a Flex, but uh, I'll take what I can get here. Anything that gets us through the next few battles. And yes, it's good against Sentries, too. We're definitely going to go for another elite fight. Uh, I don't fear a knob with a fear potion. And sentries ought to be pretty nice with uh, with this. Yes, potentially upgrade fire breathing as well. We'll see what we have. We'll see what we get from the, the next couple of rewards. Because um, we do get another card reward, another elite reward. And then we can rest. So depending on what we find, we may not find it necessary to upgrade fire breathing. If I get a cultist potion, for example, it's all over. Hey, look, he's on his own this time. Stinky looter. Think that. It is you who will be giving me money. Probably. Also, my hit points. Hello? Ow. Ow, my hit points. 
Thank goodness for burning blood. Uh, it's gonna kill you now. A dupe pot. Okay, that helps quite a bit. So that, for example, could mean we don't have to upgrade fire breathing, potentially, if we want to invest this instead. Rage is okay in a deck like this. I like Rage a lot with Letter Opener. Rage makes me want to upgrade the other Pommel Strike. Let's take a Rage. A lot of unupgraded cards to be adding, but I, I really like the Relic interactions we've got going on. Say no to Searing Blow. Just don't. Just don't do it. Already Rage putting in a little bit of work here as we get into the three sentries fight. This is our chance to fire breathe and our chance to Reaper. Reaper defend looks good. That's kind of like blocking for 20 in a really roundabout way. Sort of. Okay, fire breathing is here. Even before this day is good. So let's go fire breathing. Um, I really want the letter opener. So defend, defend, battle trance sounds good. Let's do lots of AoE. Perfect. Bonk. Get a boat thingy for 10 block on turn one. Unfortunately, that's no help at all against Hexaghost. And we do find a flex. Hmm. It is a zero cost skill as well. There's also dual wield. I do like this flex quite a bit. Flex Heavy Blade, Flex Reaper, Flex just Pommel Strikes is pretty good. Flex Letter Opener. Then we could upgrade the Flex and do pot the Fire Breathing for Hexaghost. And then I feel like we have a pretty good Act 2 deck. Not 100% sure that Upgrade Flex into Try to Saving Dupe Pot will work. But maybe. Maybe it will. Letter opener archetype. Let's go. And then we just find another runic pyramid and this deck will be amazing. All right, Hexy G, what do you got? Turn one bash, turn one fire breathing. That's a pretty good start. Is it good enough to not do fire breathing? I don't think so. be safe. I, I think I mostly agree that uh, just use, investing this potion to make sure that we definitely don't get wrecked here is probably worth it. We're also, yes, at 70% chance to find another potion after this fight. All right. So instantly we can flex Reaper for 12. That's a cool way to block. Actually, unironically better than playing two defense here, so let's do it. Heal 12, heal 12. Take 24. Still oh, got a good amount of health here. Old France will exactly draw all of these cards, which quite frankly is perfect. Play Reckless Charge. Drug. I guess Pommel Strike is more damage than Heavy Blade, right? That's uh, 22 versus 21. Slightly better. Uh, 
12 per status we draw is going to add up to quite a bit. We're okay. Deal 10, deal 5. Okay, really good bash draw again. In fact, I'd love to draw these cards next turn, so let's not play Pummel. I'll just play Regular Strike. Let's do Rage Battle Trance here. Ooh, Rage Reckless Charge Battle Trance. I can play Bash, or I can just block a bunch. Party Vol next turn anyway. We've got lots of damage in the draw pile. This is 36 added damage. We would definitely be short without the double fire breathing. This is what, 15? We never die next turn. I think I'd rather just deal the 15, make sure we definitely don't get in front out here. We're only taking uh, eight. Yeah, you're dead. Be gone, Hexaghost. Be gone. Get a bunch of money and a block potion, and we're out of Act 1. That ain't too bad. We're offered another Reaper, a Berserk, or an Offering. I think most of us know my opinion on Offering at this point. Having the Reaper Flex combo and having the Letter Opener only further improves this Offering card. So I see this is to be a very strong Offering. It's a good deck accelerant. Uh, it costs us health, but we can get the health back. When is Berserk good, says Six Witch? If you have a somewhat slow draw-heavy slash block-heavy deck, it can be quite good if you've got a bunch of Shrugganoffs, um, but you need lots of energy to play them. Berserk can pay off. It's also really good when you can negate the downside with something like the Orange Pellets Relic or the Clockwork Souvenir Relic or even the Odd Mushroom Relic that reduces the damage you take when Voln is pretty good with this one. Yeah, it's nice if you don't get any energy from your boss relics, but the awkwardness with Berserk is that you're often picking this card before you find out whether you would get energy or not. Especially compared to Offering, I'd rather have that energy up front. Ooh, interesting. E-Cube Star. Interesting. Hmm. Hard to argue with more energy. Something like Black Star is within reason for this deck, but maybe a bit awkward. With Letter Opener, I really like having more base energy, so Curse Key stands out to me. This would give us a curse every time we open a non-boss chest. Definitely worse at the end of Act 1. Uh, as we're guaranteed to find at least two chests from here, we could find more as well. Fire Breathing Rejoices, that's true. Runic Cube could get us more card draw. I think Runic Cube is maybe second choice here. Makes Offering draw one more, which is kind of cool. And if we find a Bloodletting, suddenly we're in business. But realistically, I think we'd have to have a Bloodletting for this to become really good. Black Star, probably my third choice here. We get extra relics from Elites, but that requires us to kill Elites in the first place. Something that we're not consistent at at the moment. The letter opener and the anchor help a lot. But with only three base energy, if we take the black star, I think it would be quite a struggle to defeat elites in Act 2. Whereas if we take the cursed key, elites should be a lot easier. Yeah, exactly. More draw to use flex. So that, that's where the real advantage of Runic Cube comes in, is being able to get... More Flex Reaper hands, more Rage Triple Pummel Strike hands. I'm gonna go with Kursky though. Is Black Star relegated to a win more tier? It's definitely somewhere in there. Interesting act layout. I like this act too. This is a gentle act too. Oh, well, it doesn't have to be. You can go headlong into an early elite if you want. Um, but I prefer this formation. Get 
couple rest sites and a shop early in the act before we fight any of the elites and then we can make sure we're we're nice and sturdy for whatever we run into our act boss is going to be bronze automaton we definitely need a way to scale up proper for the boss fight that's what we're going to be looking for in the shop and from our card rewards could go for this elite instead of the shop i don't think so but it's an option let's see how our first couple fights go and then we can decide left or right path here let's mark this one in red Pretty sure we're going green here. Something like this. Lots of events later in the act. I don't like that so much. Because they could be treasure chests. Those events. That would be worthless if so. How's it going? Infrared Eclipse. Am I familiar with the Spire board game? Yeah, I checked it out on Tabletop Simulator. When it was initially making the rounds. Seems quite cool. Especially if you've got some friends to play with. Don't anticipate doing anything with the Spire board game myself, but I'm glad it's out there. Oh, heck. My draw order. Bummer. I do 25 damage. Is that possible? Not really, huh? Not really. Let's go shrug Battle Trance here. Twenty damage next turn is a lot more reasonable. Maybe we can even flex Reaper here. We're particularly lucky. Yeah. Played, um, I deliberately played Pommel Strike before Flex there, because if we flexed first, then the Reaper draw would heal us for less. Because it wouldn't have enough hit points. So we get two more health for um, flexing after the Pommel draw. That worked out pretty well. And that worked out quite well. No Wild Strike for me, no Hemo for me. Runic Cube cackling in the corner there. Hopefully we can replace our potion. Now this is a fight for fire breathing. This is just fire breathing strike reaper? Seems fine to me. Could shrug to look at one more card, but we have less energy, so what's the point? Bonk. Seems fine. Gotta take damage to make damage. We already played Reaper. Did a dupe pot? That's good. Carnage is here. I got Heavy Blade. I don't feel like I need a Carnage. BBQ Tissue Paper says, I'm a Valve fanboy, but never take fire breathing. Are you underestimating it? Potentially. Depends on what you're doing with those statuses. If you keep exhausting them for something like Second Wind, then it's not really worth it. But if you end up drawing them over and over again, then it can be really powerful. You can make fire breathing your damage engine. It's a, it's a weird one, but it can work pretty well. Based on how those opening fights went, I don't feel thrilled about going to an Elite right now. So let's go with the green route. Find some potions. Another fear potion. So many fear potions so far. I do like the swift pot. I'm going to discard the fear pot for the swift pot. Our draw makes the letter opener go burr. We get a fight, which I'm quite happy with. Defend, defend, reckless? I think so. To make sure we're pushing enough damage here that the mystic feels forced to heal that way they won't buff the strength of the centurion who is inevitably going to get some licks in here it's a bummer but so it is 
Hopefully we can heal back at least some of this. Let's draw a lot of cards this turn, see what happens. Yes! Boom! Heal 20. Easy game. And... Slaughter some fools. Yeah, this deck is slapping now. Good. Perfect. Love it. We've had first flex, yes, but what about second flex? Well, I don't have any better options, so I'm going to click on that. We need strength somehow, and I want more consistency. And a second flex? That's consistency. I'll take it. Could offering to bash here. I think that's probably a good idea, considering the draw pile. Just kill it next turn. And that's why we have the Swift Potion, maybe? Not that much damage. An embarrassing draw, though. Lead is next. 50% chance for new potion. I'd rather have the draw pot against the elite here. It's a good way to make clash work. Is it just second wind or silver soul? You could also use stuff like uh, blue candle or medical kit to get rid of uh, nasty stuff in hand. That's not that much damage. And we can Reaper back some of the health here. Should we get nine health back? Not bad. Yeah, that was fine. Really didn't move that much health-wise. Okay, but this is not the stuff. Still. Very ironclad card reward so far. Do we need uh, some AoE here? Cleave actually does seem like a reasonable choice. Maybe even Thunderclap. Thunderclap is kind of like Cleave, except it adds the ability to bust through Artifact on Bronze Automaton. We do have Letter Opener slash Fire Breathing for AoE in general. I think that's probably good enough, actually. Jiggly Fly, thanks for the tier one. I'm going to skip these. They're not good enough. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Sorry, Jiggy Fly. Not Jiggly. Jiggy. Got to get Jiggy with it. More like Thunder Crap. Okay, well, this shop seems pretty good. Helix is here again. Evolve is here. Shockwave is here. Medical Kit is here. Lots of stuff is here. Uppercut on Sale is here. Eight a win. <laughs> what a shop indeed. Um, where do I even begin here? Helix is really nice for Bronze Automaton. Helix with Offering is also really good. I love Helix Offering. I'm at a really hard time saying no to Helix. I'm gonna do it. So, 129, I can buy Shockwave or Evolve, but not both. I guess I could do Uppercut Evolve. If I kind of want both. Evolve is good in general. Remove is tempting too. We're going to have curses coming up. Remove is really tempting. Does the Gambler's Brew always shine? I think only when it's in the card reward screen or in the shop. Um, but as an uncommon potion... 
Uh, it will shine. Yeah, rare potions have a gold shine to them. Gambler's Brew is good once you have good stuff in your deck. Well, I do like Uppercut Remove quite a bit. I lose a strike here. All right. I'll take it. And then we can upgrade Uppercut. I want to debuff the, the boss. Not going to open this. I don't want to curse right now. Especially not with Helix. I just want to clobber a couple of elites and try to beat the boss. He's ENC. Thanks for the 16 months. Working on year two. Let's go. All right. Let's see how good our quote-unquote AoE is. Not very good is the answer. I'm going to get Fire Breathing down for sure. I could play Defend, but that won't kill the Fat Gremlin, so we got to kill the Fat Gremlin here. Not the world's best turn one. However, what about turn two? Let's go bash Uppercut Heavy Blade onto the leader here. Next turn, we can flex Reaper against three Gremlins. Cool. Bonk. Take one. Don't even get attacked. Although they're going to get angry. Let's see. 16 plus 15 plus 12. Won't kill. Could consider Swift Potion here. Try to find Lethal. Maybe better to use it next turn. Hmm. I could never kill this fool. The Festo MD, thanks for the full year. Cheers to a year. Is that Dupe Reaper? No, because we can't heal more than full. Although it would kill them. It's kind of convenient. I think I'd rather use the Swift here if I'm going to use anything at all. Although we're not actually losing that much health, right? I would go Reaper. I guess we strike the Sneaky Gremlin. And then Reckless Charge the Leader. So we will be attacked for 12 plus 7. 19, take 11. That's not bad. Go to full health, take 11. Let's use Neither Potion. Can't kill either of them, right? And then if we fail to get a kill here, we can Swift Potion. But I'm pretty sure we just kill. This uppercut strike, strike, right? That's 19 plus 18, which is 37. Good fight. No potions used. We do get a Liquid Memories, so we could have just freely used the potion. A Whetstone will upgrade two random attacks. Reaper, your time is nigh. And Strength, Strength, Reaper is going to be so strong with the Demon Form here. There's our boss answer. Freaking Demon Form. Let's go. Let's go. Shmamarin, thanks for 34 months. The ninth distinct Fibonacci number. And Necrothal TV with the 14 months in the Prime sub. The Strongening. All right, now we'll take Liquid Memories. It is Reaper's time. Let's go. Reaper is going to be so much healing this run. Let's freaking go. Double flex. But then play Demon Form. Excuse you. All right, good talk. Good talk. You are a jerk. I hope you know that. It's all good. We can heal back easily enough. Ow. You can stop now, though.
Good enough. Ooh. My Reaper. Oh well. Tough Sneko fight. Beast Lamb, Intimidate, Iron Wave. Devs. Would I say that Demon Form is a card that's better on High Ascension? I don't think so. I think it's easier to put in play uh, and easier to wait for the strength on lower ascensions. So I think it works better there, actually. Keep all this. I'm gonna go Rest Sight Combat Elite. Why would I have to take this? Upgrade Demon Form. Upgrade Card Draw. Yeah, I can upgrade Demon Form and Offering. I want to do that. Well, let's do that. And I mentioned I don't want to take those events because they could be treasure chests. There is the chance at Colosseum. That is true. Is it worth it, though? I don't think so. Buffer that. Uppercut. Wow, no block, huh? Could liquid memories here, but I'm not going to. Really want these potions to be able to preserve our block for the buffer on Bronze Automaton. And I do owe the chat a dad joke. Did you hear that the bird cultists have gotten into government? They've formed a caucus. No refunds was shut. Oh. Hello. A free flame barrier plus? I'm not going to say no to that. Regret's not bad here either, but if it's a plus, you must not refuse. Uh-oh. I guess I'm playing demon form. This rage actually works out, giving me just enough block to negate the second hit rather than the first one. So we take 14 here. Don't deal very much damage, but that's okay. We're not getting weakened, so next turn's the turn. We'll have three strength, plus maybe more. Be not afraid, Twitch chat. We're good here. Okay, things are looking a little worse. Okay, things are looking a little bit better. There we go. Excellent. So I'm just going to do what? Flame Barrier Reckless Charge? Yeah. Okay, no Entangle for us. Full block. Uh, killing now is going to be more health. Thirteen. I mean, thirteen. It's fine. <laughs> Ridiculous. Demon form takes us home nice and easy. Get a whole bunch of money, a mob bank, which will give us money per floor. And then three cards that I don't think that I want. We could take True Grit and upgrade it, maybe. How's it going, Mr. No Pantalones? Hmm. 
get Helix again. It's true. This time we had to buy it. So we went out of our way to get the Helix. But yeah, Helix Street continues. What did I not like about Bellatro? Um, I, I do like the core concept of that game. I like that you're you're taking a, a 52 card deck and sort of modifying it deck builder style. And you have the jokers that are modifying your run relic style, but the execution bored me. I, I didn't it didn't grasp me at all. Not enough of a fantasy spin on it? That certainly could be the case for me. I am a, a fantasy love and nerd. Hmm. Is it time to upgrade Heavy Blade? Rage and Offering are good upgrades here, too. With Double Flex Plus and the Demon Form, that Heavy Blade upgrade really adds to the damage. So does upgrading Offering so we draw more cards. I want the bigger Flex turns. We want double flex turns, we're gonna need offering here. Question is, will we use offering with our buffer or is that gonna be used for the hyper beam here? What a sad turn one. Excuse me, I was promised a demon form. Oh Lord. Hmm. So we can play all of these cards. Seems really hard to keep buffer for uh, Hyper Beam, doesn't it? Seems really difficult. Red Panda Rising, thanks for the nine months of support. Put Liquid Memories on Flame Barrier here, which would deal decent AoE damage and keep the buffer. Can you duplicate a liquided card? Yes, we can Liquid Memories and then dupe pot the card if we want to. That is allowed. Realistically, I'm playing Offering to get Demon Form down. I think I'd rather dupe pot the Offering or something. Or a dupe pot the demon form, rather. Hmm. Okay, I think we just go aggro here. Don't liquid memories the flame barrier. Take eight. We should have enough raw health to survive Hyper Beam, is my belief. Although that requires us to redraw back to the Reaper, which is not necessarily guaranteed. This hand is exactly why I wanted the Offering upgrade. Here we go. Okay, that's early enough. I think I'm just going to do Pot Demon Form to try to win quickly here. That's the easiest answer. Shuffle without all this. I don't want to do that. Okay. Play reckless there. We're now gaining six strength per turn. Reaper back health. So don't kill the orb. Probably do kill Bronze Automaton. It's actually not that much less damage to do Flame Barrier. Okay, that's fine. Do 12 return damage. What do I think about a Seek Potion? Oh, I like that idea. Seek Potion. Very cool. 
Range next turn sounds okay. Let's just go Uppercut Reaper, yeah? Although that won't kill the orb. Maybe it's Strike Reaper Pummel Strike. Finish this orb off. Although it's stealing a card. That's actually a good thing. Yeah, Uppercut Reaper. Kill me to fall. That way we never die on this turn. And then the double demon form means we'll kill it quickly from here. Good job, Rage. Blocking just a wee bit. Ouch, my face, though. Hurts like a truck. It hits you in the face. But now... Bonk. Bronk. Boom. Okay, we win. Spooky fight. Definitely a spooky fight. But we're through. GG. Immolate Juggernaut Corruption. Feels like a corruption deck to me. Although we don't actually have that many skills. We do have a letter opener. And quite a bit of card draw. And if we pick up other combining powers, this could do a really good work. Yeah, DuPont solved both of our act bosses so far. It's pretty cool. Immolate seems like reliable AoE. Guess what? So is corruption, actually. Kind of cool. Taking corruption here. Into Calling Bell, Sacred Bark, or Runic Dome. <laughs> Runic Dome doesn't seem good with Helix. I guess I'm okay with the Calling Bell. We'll get one curse and three relics. One common, one uncommon, one rare. More relics could definitely change things for the better. We have enough cards that the curse won't be too big of a downside. We'll get another curse with the curse key. Hopefully we can remove that one. And it works with fire breathing, that's true. How do I juggle two scaling methods at once? Usually I'm trying to have either one support the other. Like barricade scaling helping you set up reaper heals. Or you're looking to have one form of scaling be your defensive scaling and the other form of scaling be your offensive scaling. And having those work side by side can make a lot of sense. Let's see what we get from Calling Bell here. Preserved Insect Molten Egg Mango. I'm going to be pretty content with that. 14 max health with Reaper is huge. Easier elites will definitely help. Upgraded future attacks is a little questionable. We're looking to add skills from here. I would, would have strongly preferred Toxic Egg, but uh, happy enough with these for sure. We did delay fighting the Burning Elite, so now we have to do the Burning Elite, but thankfully it's not too big of a deal. Biggest problem with fighting the Burning Elite is no shop this act, meaning we'll have a lot of money from the Maw Bank, if nothing else. Good for us. Good for us. Definitely wouldn't mind a second upgraded heavy blade. Alright, I guess I'll take it. Guess I'll take it. Begin to fall. Lose flex, corruption, or pommel strike. Terrible. I guess I'll lose a pommel strike plus because it's easy enough to replace. If we find another pommel strike, but ouch, still. 
The others are less replaceable. Feels a bit bad. Ramen Noodle says, have you ever considered a community day event using the Together Inspire mod? We've done stuff like that in the past. We have indeed. My spiker solution. Reaper coming up. I guess Reaper can be my spiker solution. Maybe. Lame Barrier Reaper would be perfect. Close enough. Heart of Iron. That's a good potion. King Red Plus. Don't have enough card draw, especially without our pummel strike, for this to be good, I don't think. Still looking for hours that interact with exhaust, a feel no pain or a dark embrace would be really welcome. hit here. Guess we might as well play Offering. Since the buffer will only block two currently. for a potion. Just Reaper health back, I guess. Feels bad. Ah, damn it. Fine. Not even enough, huh? Discouraging. Discouraging. Hmm. We're not strong enough. And our draw orders are not helping here. Too much garbage in this deck, huh? Yeah, we really need a Dark Embrace or this is going to fall apart. Explosive Potion would at least let the Reaper do something here. It's a true shame that this hand only makes 16 block, though. Awful. Just awful. I think that makes me want to use the Heart of Iron here. It's a bummer to use that potion. I'm going to do it. Timing demon form? Alternately, I should probably flex bash heavy blade, just kill one right now. Seems like the more reasonable pick. If I want to heal in this fight, I don't know. 
Uh, we should kill one right now. Middle one. Middle one. This fight will get out of control if I don't kill one right on that turn. I think so, anyway. be able to get some health back. Yeah, some. Six plus nine? It's not enough. Gotta do 34 plus nine? Yeah. Two health. I'll take it. Bummer. Big bummer here. Okay, it's mini Repto. Finally, we get offering when we're supposed to get it early. Okay, this fight shouldn't be too bad. We're really lucky we could even heal here. Oh boy, looks like we're really lucky. Good. Fire breathing also seems worth it. Let's go fire breathing corruption. Practice charge here. Ah, garbage. The worst hands of this deck. Pretty bad. I play demon form, I can't even kill them with the explosive pot. Bummer. Protep, she's mad. He's pissed. Very, very, very pissed. Can't just kill you, right? No. Not even close. Alright, we do get through the Super Repto fight, though. And we're given a Shockwave. Great with our Corruption. Get in here, Shockwave. Reckless Charge, not terrible, 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 but not needed. Uh, and we can rest for some hit points here before we go more Elite Fighting, right? Okay, not too, too, too bad overall. Could be better, but could be worse. We are, after all, alive. Definitely concerned by our situation, though. And Nib is very welcome. Giant Head is too, actually. Giant Head shouldn't be too bad. As long as we don't lose our buffer too early here. Good. Not gonna play Reckless yet. Lock this turn. Got it. Good. So that means probably skipping offering. So that we can buffer the big hit. Oh, even better. Just uh, taking the big hit to the face. So that I can play offering next turn. Perfect. How'd you know that's exactly what I wanted, Giant Head? Demon form, you're a bit late, but better late than never. Realistically, we have to kill this thing next turn. Hopefully that means we can do a gigantic freaking Nib attack this turn. Sure looks like we can. Here 
Whisper's already going to heal us to full, so we should pen nib the Heavy Blade to get the kill. We do Heavy Blade, Reaper, Heavy Blade. Actually. Yeah, good enough. Good enough. Okay, 85 health is awesome. And Ceasing Top is not. Second Reaper seems good. Somebody was asking about the second Reaper Plus. It happened. Big Baba, thanks for the prime sub. In the two months, Big Baba. Plus. Run saved? I wouldn't necessarily say this has saved our run. This is no Dark Embrace, for example. Um, plus, we're about to get cursed with Writhe, and I can't take the pair. So there could have been worse. We're not happy. Not particularly, anyway. I think I'd rather play the demon form here, yeah? Talk. Hmm. It's this. A lot of burns headed our way. Very sad turn to have drawn offering and such, and Reaper too. Looks like we can probably kill it next turn, though. Guess that's fine. Should've at least played my attacks. Unceasing top, go! <laughs> oh no. I was afraid of that. Not too bad, though. Ouch. Bottled Tornado. Okay, here we go. And the Pommel Strike is back. Bottled Tornado can solve much of our problems by allowing us to get Demon Form on turn one. Uh, I think Demon Form turn one far more important than Corruption turn one. Because there are many fights where we want to get that down immediately so that Reaper starts to scale immediately. Block Pot ain't too shabby either in terms of staying alive. I recall here. And what do we do for the rest here? Double orb blockers with 32 health and a bottled demon form. Uh I don't know, man. Spooky. If we had full health, this would be a different story, but at 32 hit points, this is very hard. Yeah, and we have Rive too. Oh, yeah. Oof. What rare relic would be worth it? I mean, Dead Branch would, right? Lizard Tail, potentially, too. Is it worth both potions? If both potions got us the W, I think it would be. I'm just not sure that they do. Seems hard to imagine them killing by turn two. Turn one, we can block pot. And we have anchor. Hopefully we can preserve buffer on turn one. There are ways to lose it though. And Nib is on seven. That's a good point. That's pretty good. I don't know. This this could go well. It could go terribly. And how do we do without the extra rare relic? I think now that we have the bottled demon form, we at least have a good chance. Without. We also have a lot of money. I think it makes me want to try to get through the boss gauntlet, as we are. Our potion chance is terrible, too, so it's very unlikely that we can fix this. I think I'm going to refuse here. 
No need to be greedy. I take these, though. I'd love a shop. Combat seemed like the sensible thing to do. Combat seemed like the sensible thing to do. Need more card rewards. We need more health. Is. How can we get that? Hmm. Good corruption here. Doesn't matter. Take eleven. Should be okay. Should be okay. I have to block potion here, sadly. Good. We can get a lot of health back here. Take 11. Cool. All right. A bit better. Currently, Reaper will benefit us. Probably just kill now. Take four. Let's do that. More strength or another shrug. Both are quite good with corruption. Feels like with the bottle demon form, we need the shrug more than we need the spot weakness. But both are pretty good. Okay, one more shapes fight. Hello? Why are you like this? That's a pretty good block potion. This fight could go really badly. We could also just heal a lot here. Four targets for Reaper is quite good. Really prefer not to use a potion. We might have to use the swift pot, though. I'm not going to reckless charge. Okay, let's see what happens. Depending on where these dazes go, we might just kind of get forced into a bad situation, though. This looks good. Good. Okay, good. So just kill the exploder. You. And you. And then block. Okay, then we have two Reapers coming up. One is pen nibbed, or I could just pen nib Reaper right now. Less total healing, though. Please, no. Just draw the Reaper. Help. There we go. 
Okay, we got most of our health back, looking pretty good for the boss gauntlet, and what a blessing. We find the feel no pain. That's why you take the combats over the events. We finally get the card we're looking for, or at least one of them. Feel no pain puts us from being behind on block to doing a bit better. Close to another spot weakness here for better strength gain. Don't underestimate this. One demon form, even on turn one, is not that much strength. But I'm taking a feel no pain here. And because we recalled earlier, we get to upgrade the feel no pain. That was the big reason for the recall timing. Could also upgrade shockwave, but I think we'd rather upgrade this to feel no pain plus. And that's... Uh, so we didn't get to fight orb walkers for that reason, but potentially worth Okay. Not much of a choice here. We just go Demon Form Defend. I guess we could think about playing Block Potion, but I don't see any reason to do that. Overall, I think this fight against these two is probably one of our easier. The Time Eater is the second easiest of our Act 3 bosses. Gonna block. Buy yourself time for demon form here. Standard approach is to target uh, Donu first. They scale the strength of both bosses over time. So they're a priority target here. There's our corruption. Oof, tough turn though. Ow. Hmm. Might be a swift potion. Feels bad. We can easily buy more potions, is the good news. This kind of hand will get us killed in Act 4. It's bad. Yeah, I think I need to accelerate a little bit here. That's more like it. But still didn't draw the feel no pain though. Ugh. At least it's guaranteed next turn though. One heal? I think I need it. Here we go. Here we go. Did use our potion there, but that's okay. Like I said, we can buy a new one easily enough. And it is Tim. Glad to see you, Tim. Tim with turn one demon form shouldn't be too bad. Two, three, four, five, six. I cannot play seven cards. So I think just defend, defend, bash then. And 
and then four cards this turn. Flex, uppercut, strike, strike. Get that pen nib ready. Where's the big bonk? That is up for a pen nib reaper? Sure. Dad joke alert. Did you hear about the man who created a belt entirely out of wristwatches? It was a complete waste of time. Full Nelson bandana with the five months. How do you know when to play corruption in fights like this? I think for this deck, we'd basically just always play the corruption. Um, for other decks, it's kind of dependent on how required it is that you replay your skill cards. Some decks need to replay their skills more than others. Like playing the same skill multiple times, basically. How often does that happen? The rage and the flexes are something we'd like to be able to be able to be able to play more than once, but the rest isn't too important here. This deck. Yeah. That's not the draw I wanted, thank you. Alright, alright. Two more attacks to kill. Reaper Flex. Reaper Heavy Blade. Yeah. Here we go. Okay, we have Pen Nib set up for next act. We have full health. We have 700 gold. We have a bottled demon form. I think these things are enough to give us at least a chance here as we go into act four. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire? You deal 20, 21 damage. That's so three years ago. Have I been here before? I think we want to upgrade this Heavy Blade. Actually, Rage Shockwave are decent too. Shockwave in particular, I really like for Act 4. Having this upgraded for Heart is such a big deal. Give me that. Okay, we're rich. We're really rich. So I could buy Smooth Stone Calipers, I guess. I guess. The shop kind of bad, though. <laughs> Be honest. We buy the Battle Trance. We buy the Ghostly Armor. We definitely buy the Ancient Potion. Definitely buy Ancient Potion. I want anything else here. Swift Strike Plus is not that bad. Not that good, though, either. A little spot over block potion. I like block potion, especially when buffer is involved. Will I ever take mayhem? <laughs> I don't think so. No, I don't think so. All right, I think that's actually all we want, which feels kind of mediocre. Well, good luck to us. I love our odds. That was not the shop we were looking for. We'll see. At least the enemies are tiny. And the demon form is turn one. Rampage bad card or not? It's it's a bad card. Yeah, Rampage is, is not it. Do we ever pummel here? There's no benefit to playing defend, right? I think we want to pummel strike the shield. We're not killing spear by turn two, but shield by turn three is reasonable. Lower health. 
could even skip the demon form entirely in this fight. They don't have that much stuff. Let's try that. So we might be able to do something like take less damage early, get closer to offering if we draw with Pummel Strike here. Or Corruption. Yeah, I want to keep drawing. Can do double defend, turn back around with Reckless if I want to. Block to 22, 25. Looks like we're taking a lot next turn, pretty much no matter what, though. Could use Block Pot to keep Buffer into next turn. Doesn't seem good in this fight. We're never blocking the multi-hit. Next turn could really be bad. Not much I can do about it with two wounds, uh, two burns going directly on top of the deck. I guess not playing Reckless Charge is my best option, but that would mean taking six more here. Something like bash the shield, turn around, offer this hit, take 12, and then take so much more next turn. But we have Reapers uh, that don't do anything because I didn't play the demon form like a dunce. I still think killing shield by turn three is the way to win here. It should just stay facing that way. Is there any world where I can do 80 to this thing in one turn? Seems really unlikely. Oh, well, that's a good start. Eh, not so, huh? Ominous. Very ominous. Here's where Demon Four might have been nice. Next turn I get kind of obliterated. Next turn I get kind of obliterated. Okay, at least Offering is here. Tell me this feels. 24, 13, nope. Definitely did this wrong. Well, shoot. I think we're toast here, it's wish yet. Jack just not strong enough to get past the elites. GG. GG. I do wonder if there was a way to get through this fight, but I'm not surprised to die here. Not at all with this deck. No, not at all. Not enough card draw in this one. Uh, I do wonder about that Evolve that we could have bought. That was the only Evolve we ended up seeing, and maybe that's the one thing that could have made a substantial difference in the late game. But overall, I'm really unhappy with the deck that we ended up with. Too many strikes. I did not like Curse Key at all. Although we did need the energy. I guess we could have done Runic Dome Black Star. Yeah, I really don't think Demon Form Turn 1 fixes our problem here. Like, maybe it gets us through this fight with 30 or so health, but I don't know. I'm not, I'm not convinced that we survive long enough. Does this break the streak? Of course it does. That's what losing does. Cheesy Wiz says, I think take the first evolve or dark embrace you see is a rule we keep learning the hard way. Oh yeah. Sometimes it's the only one you see.
Simply invent a new kind of streak. Can't believe the Helix didn't save us. That's tough. That's a tough run to lose. Definitely a winnable run. But we didn't. That's how it goes sometimes. But yeah, getting an 8 streak is pretty encouraging, too. Let's see, Twitch chat. I think it's definitely break time here. Time to refill the legs, stretch the water. What else is on my mind here? Many things. Helix F to your relic. We're solidly above 70 on clad now. That's good. That's continuing to be the goal. I'd like to get to 75. Yeah, I'll be back in a few minutes to chat. We'll do another ironclad run when I return. BRB. Alrighty, Twitch chat, we are back. Thank you for hanging out. Gonna be a bit more uh, reckless, a bit more fun pursuing. I think another thing we could have done last run that might have made a really big difference, of course, is boss swapping at the start. Don't know that I loved Floor 1 Reaper, although it did do the job of getting us to Act 3. Let's cut Act 1 kind of bad. This is not an act to swap, to swap in. Now, if Orb Walkers had given us Gambling Chip, that also could have made a difference, right? With a Transform 1 Strike. 
Yeah, I don't think I would do a Reaper Floor 1 again. It didn't work out all that well. <laughs> the return of Reaper. All right, we got a Reaper whether we like it or not. This time, instead of paying health, we paid a strike. That's definitely a better thing to pay. <laughs> That's good. That's really good. No, I think, I think Floor 1 Reaper actually is quite good overall. Wouldn't say that I hate it. It just didn't, didn't work out last run, but that's not necessarily anything to do with the Reaper. Our Act 1 and our Act 2 felt perfectly fine. So I really don't have any complaints. I do think it is a, a pretty good first floor card. We go Fire Breathing again with Slime Boss? I really don't like this card. But it is good Slimbo counter. I'm taking a shrug. I don't want it. I don't want it. You heard me. Yeah, it was the rest of the deck that couldn't function. It wasn't the Reaper's fault. Or was it? I think I'd better play Bash here. Oh, uh, no, we have to kill you. Can't play Reaper there, I don't think. Yeah, this is too much. Wait, I can't even... I can't kill you? <laughs> no, because ba Bash was bottom decked. So I can shrug Bash, which is not enough. Terrible. I guess I'll triple block, take four more. Maybe that means we get to heal one with Reaper. Firepot, you're insane. I'll take my one healing. Go headbutt. I don't have enough headbutts in my decks. Looks like we're in really good shape to fight this Burning Elite. I think I'm going to do that. Let's go Burning Elite 3 Elites this act. I can get behind that. Uh, decide from there whether we want vents or what. Should be able to stay on pretty good health thanks to Reaper, of course. Use you. That's illegal, sir. 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 Okay. Guaranteed kill next turn. We can pull lock. Would orb walkers have potentially changed last run? Definitely. The question is, would it have ended sooner or ended later? <laughs> There's no easy way to know that. Shrug versus Flame Barrier. I like a double early shrug. Let's do it. Well, if it isn't the actual worst set of gremlins. Arguably out of all of the configurations for this fight, this one is the singular worst. Sometimes double sneaky instead of double fat gremlin, but yeah, fat gremlin, sneaky gremlin, wizard all together, very scary. To the point that we're going to have to use a potion here. Attack pot could give us some AoE, which would be nice. Fire pot could just kill something. Somewhat like Reaper, then Fire Potion, the Wizard. But then we're taking 15 this turn. Yeah, this initial draw is also really bad. All of our remaining damage has to go on the Wizard. Yikes. Immolator Whirlwind from the Attack Pot would be the easy outs here. Increasingly just thinking fire pot though. 
pick 15. Next turn I take four, probably. That seems correct, actually. Okay, let's fire pot. Reaper. I don't want to rely on attack potion to give me something. But it might not, and then I have to use both potions. No thanks. Go shrug. Strike. Headbutt shrug. And now we're fine. Life is good. Headbutt, strike, shrug, strike. Match kills. Okay. Okay. We got a damage potion too. Not so bad. Could take a cleave to avoid having to deal with that problem again. Or an anger. And I really like anger going into slime boss. Especially with headbutt and two shrugs. Anger, welcome to the team. And yes, the burning elite is still going to happen here. Is that the correct choice? Yes. We angie now. Almost back to full health, too. Good. How many shrugs is too many? Probably three is too many. I'll take a true grit, I guess. Definitely light on the damage. This could be really scary if it's a gremlin knob. Although the attack potion and the headbutt ought to help. Not too worried here. It's not gremlin knob. It's plus strength sentries and we have explosive potion. This is fine. This is totally fine. Might even get to keep the attack pod. Seems pretty good overall. Reaper? Yeah! And then Trugret? Really good fight overall so far. We're killing this one next turn, so let's strike the middle one now. So we can kill the middle one in two turns. Yeah. Actually, that might have been enough to get you, right? What is this? 18 plus 9? Oh, so close. Unexpected, but oh well. Week 12, we should be out of here now. It's definitely the wrong one to attack. Dang it. Okay, whatever. It's fine. Get a happy flower. Every three turns we gain energy. And a spot weakness to gain strength. Now we're talking. I love spot weakness with headbutt. And of course, strength plus reaper is the shizniz. Could even upgrade that. Yeah, let's upgrade the strength gain card. Was the date the challenge started? First of the year. Actually, we technically started a little bit before the year started, but first of the year. Uh, what events, right? Not that one, though. No, not that one. And Nib, Pen Nib Reaper is back. Is the Reaper upgrade ever worthwhile? I think it can be. Only sometimes, but I think it can be. With Pen Nib, it gets a, a little bit better. As well. You need to die next turn. 
I'm just gonna play Bash here. Pommel Strike? Pommel Strike. We'll get there, I believe. I believe. I also believe that if you have an anger, you can remove every strike that you have. But I believe. Alrighty, we're gonna do something a little weird. We're gonna play spot weakness and headbutt it. That's why I like spot weakness and headbutt together. That way we can gain strength on the turn that it actually matters for this fight. Hopefully we can kill next turn. This looks spooky. Oh god. What do you mean that's what I drew? And Nib, you're gonna have to do some heavy lifting in a moment. Hey, Pen Nib. What you got? How much damage is this currently? I can do Bash, Strike, Pommel Strike. That would be 12 plus 15 plus 39. Which is 66, so we're a little bit short. But I believe that means if we draw the Anger, we don't need to use the Attack Potion. So I can do Bash Pommel Strike. Because if it's um, 12 plus 19, this gets doubled to 30. Yeah, and then Anger would kill. So let's go Bash Pommel. No Anger, unfortunately, so we have to use the Attack Pot. Get him. We get rewarded with a white bee statue, so our conservation of potions is no longer necessary, as we will always get a potion every fight. We're also offered Feel No Pain v. Immolace. Cards that we did not see a whole lot of last run. Immolate, going into Slime Boss, seems like kind of a no-brainer, especially with the Pen Nib. Give me that. I do like Feel No Pain a lot, but uh, Immolate here is way too good for next act. Just look at this. Boom. Dead mushrooms. Potions. How many shrugs is too many in Act 1? I don't think I've ever had three shrugs in Act 1 before. Let's do it. I like it. Although we're almost into remove uh, block card territory. Remove defend. Power pot here. Juggernaut. Down. With three shrugs, I'm down. What do you mean they don't intend to attack? Rages. Outrageous, I say. Strike, strike, pen nib reaper, heal for 12 here. Or I could bash again. Try to pen nib the emulate. Probably bash, defend, strike is more reasonable. Then we have uh, vulnerable plus pen nib, so emulate would deal 63 damage. Do that. Put block pot here. Don't have a reason to. Turn this will deal 12. Okay, let's go spot weakness, headbutt reaper here. Take 12, next turn heal 12. Not bad. More max health, always good for a deck with a reaper. 
don't think we want an iron wave or a seeing red. And let's upgrade that Immolate. That's a good card. 28 damage. The biggest of bonks of all time. Since health doesn't matter that much in the boss fight, might as well just play this. With my plus four. Um, this would be a good turn to draw a headbutt. No? But next turn. Hello. <laughs> what do you mean? All right. Uh, attack potion. Save me. Seems better. Since a Penib on nine with Vuln. Seventy-six health, right? So I could do strike uppercut the Penib, but uh, or uh, Penib the uppercut rather. But I think it's better to just tank this hit. Next turn, Pendiv with the three attacks. And then we can get a really good split here. Yeah, 27 is pretty good. And I even have one energy left. I guess that means I could have bashed, but whatever. Now we just want to draw Immolate. Oh, dang it. Rug first, fool. Alright, that makes it slightly harder. Only slightly, though. We're still good overall. I really did that to myself, though. There we are. Perfect relic setup. Yeah. Demon form, you're back. We do have Reaper like last time, but do I trust you? Probably not. Not compared to Fiendfire. Fiendfire deletes cards, does massive damage. Seems good. Got spot weakness for strength gain, which I strongly prefer over demon form for the most part. Especially with a headbutt. Impervious, not bad, but we already have three shrugs and a block potion. Seems like it might be too much block in certain fights, like Book of Stabbing, where I'd rather do damage to a single target quickly with Fiendfire. Good pen nib target too, right? I think this is Fiendfire. But none of these are bad, they're all better than skipping. And we get a Pyramid, or a Coffee Dripper. Coffee Dripper with Reaper is pretty good. But uh, Spot Weakness with Runic Pyramid is way too good. Probably one of my favorite Ironclad combos. I like Pyramid with the Triple Shrug as well. The more cards we have in hand, the more powerful Fiendfire becomes. Uh, in particular, being able to guaranteed line up Reaper with Pennib is quite strong too. So that's a very convincing, at least for me, Runic Pyramid here. Tempting formation. I've got enough money that a merchant is a good idea. Except the merchants are awkwardly placed as hell. Hmm. Interesting problem. Interesting. Could go no upgrades. Have a good act otherwise. Feels weird. So I'll try that. Not upgrading Fiendfire kind of sucks. But we have a uh, White Bee statue. Things should be good. Hello. The Shrugging.
You. Not a good card with Pyramid, unfortunately. This would have been really good last run. Oh well. But it says plus on it, right? It does. Surely that means something, right? Poorly. Nintendo 64. Armaments Plus. Upgrade all cards in your hand for the rest of combat. Now that's a Runic Pyramid hand. Card. Perfect. Very good. Very helpful. That's a Brimstone. Let's do it. We're on a zero streak. I've got a Runic Pyramid. Take a Brimstone. Start of our turn, gain two strength. But all enemies lose one strength. Or also gain one strength, rather. We're also offered freaking Whirlwind, man. Which is very good with the Brimstone. And a second wind to allow us to exhaust non-attack cards in hand. Turn them into a bunch of block. Just the way you like it. More strength. It's cool. I'll just take a bunch of damage. I don't mind. All gonna come back to me. You're not. Close enough, anyway. Upgraded headbutt. Mm. Sure. One more can't hurt. And now for the snack. Confuse me. See what happens. My entire hand. Your turn. Good fight. Now we are at full health. And we have a corruption. Corruption runic pyramid. You better believe it. Make all of my skills free. And exhaust them, meaning that Dark Embrace and Feel No Pain become amazing pickups. No complaints about this. I do have complaints about this, though. Let's see, we deal 19, 27, 47 damage. I cannot kill. I guess unless I were to use both potions, I could kill. Seems like a bit of a waste, though. Yeah, seems like a bit of a waste. Outward socket. Does 24. 
Let's just go immolate. Depend. Next turn we can corruption, probably. I can kill you with a fire pot. Let's do that, actually. Get 15 less damage. Get less healing, too, but whatever. Timing Maw Bank. We just left a shop. Second spot weakness with corruption with Runic Pyramid. Very good. And a dad joke for lullabies. What is the Ironclad's favorite bedtime lullaby? Rockaby Blade B. No refunds. Dentajill, thanks for the six months of support. <laughs> Keeping it cozy. Hmm. Boo this man. And his terrible, terrible, terrible humor. He insists on cursing everyone with. What's wrong with him? You're gonna die, sir. Could kill them both instantly, actually. Then Pennib's not set up for the elite, so hold your horses. We want to Pennib the elite here. health too. Perfect. Now that's what I'm talking about. We're going to clobber this elite. Easily. Though it is a brimstone empowered book of stabbing, which is kind of terrifying. That makes me not want a second wind here, because I'd rather have more cards in hand. A second wind. No, we should just... No, no, no. Hold cards in hand. Take the damage. Makes more sense. So I hope so. times as many is not enough. Although it'd be what? Um, 117? 137. Not enough to kill. And Karas80, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Koozie Sub Club. So we'll try to Reaper next turn. by five is a very big number. I believe that's not worth reapering. Let's get me out of here. Get me out of here.
Bag of Marbles. Make the enemies vulnerable on turn one with our extra energy from the Lantern. It's not too bad. It means we can be a bit more aggressive immediately sometimes. Kind of cool. Al. I can do pot if I want to. I can. Let's do that. Good talk. Pommel Plus, I kind of like. Berserk is a little bit interesting, but I definitely like Pommel Plus with the corruption here. Back to full HP like it ain't no thing. Bot Weakness Fiend Fire next turn probably just kills, right? Almost. Fourteen by six. Eighty four, okay. Not quite. Next turn, though. Feel no pain. Whenever a card is exhausted, gain some block. Amazing with corruption. Excellent with Runic Pyramid. We get to read a book. How's it going, Anchorus80? Anchorus saying, your YouTube content is truly exceptional. Perfect for winding down after a busy day and drifting off to a peaceful sleep. Happy to hear it. Um, as I've said a few times, I used to use Twitch videos to fall asleep myself, so I take it as a compliment when others do the same for my content. What's the book? It is the Necronomicon. Oh my. The first two cost attack played each turn is played twice. With proof in hand, will you retain your memories? Wrong. Hot nonsense incoming. Reaper is now absurd, of course. Also, we can do fun things with Fiendfire. Hilarious things with Fiend Fire. Toasted. Bloodletting is probably better than second Feel No Pain, but, uh,. These are both very good. These are both very good. Actually, with Brimstone, maybe we want second Feel No Pain. That way we can block even the really big scary attacks of the late game enemies by getting lots of block all at the same time. Head about that whirlwind. Bearish. Ancient potion could be good for the heart if we want to think about that already. I think with the white beast statue, we probably don't want to think about that already. But Brimstone makes the run-up to the heart so easy that maybe we do want to think about that already. Let's take this. And I plan on carrying this all the way to the heart to block the vulnerable and therefore make the first attack cycle a lot less threatening overall. 
upgrade the feel no pains. Could make uh, Sozu takeable, that's true. Wouldn't love a Sozu, but I wouldn't hate it either, I suppose. It's a really bad turn one. Or is it? You dare to attack me again? Foolish. We can do Double Bash, Single Reaper. No, I want to do Double Reaper, Single Bash, actually. Kill these minions. But one isn't even dead. It's hmm. fine. We do get a resummon. Not that there's going to be another turn, mind you. Because Fiendfire does 56 damage times 9. Which would kill Time Eater almost instantly, let alone Collector. Destroyed. Yeah, Limit Break would be a little insane here. We don't get a Limit Break. We do, however, get an Exhum, allowing us to return a Karn from the Exhaust Pile and play it again instantly. Very good with Corruption Pyramid. Could take second corruption. I don't think we're that desperate, though. We can exhume here. Gambler's Brew is good. <clears throat> can we exhume Necronomicers? We can. Yes, you can. Unfortunately, there's no energy here. Sacred Bark is an option, though, for double strength potions with the White Bee statue. Simply removing two cards is an option. Or transforming a bunch of cards is an option. Although I'd prefer the remove two. Definitely not the boss relics we were looking for. I think I'll take remove two. Neither of these potions benefit from the sacred bark, and I'd be pretty happy with these potions going into heart, so... Seems like a weird sacred bark. Why remove two over Pandora's? Uh, because the... Defends are very good with the Corruption Double Feel No Pain. We just want to lose the strikes and keep our defends, basically. Basically. I would take 999 gold. I'd even be happy about it. Ooh, Darklings. Normally a tough fight at the beginning of Act 2. Act 3, rather. Normally. Not, they all take 90 on turn one, though. They're just dead. Instantly dead. Like it ain't no thing. I'll lose four max. And? We'll not lose 485 gold for Red Mask. Get out of here, Red Mask. Stinky. Go to this shop for more money? I don't think so. Oh, here we go. Okay. Wow. We got Dark Embrace. We got Toxic Egg. We got Waffle. We got Offering. Good job. Toxic Egg with Corruption is one of my favorites. <laughs> Definitely going to do that. It means we can't afford Offering, but we could afford to Shrug or Remove. There's no such thing as too many Shrugs when you have a Corruption. What would I remove? Nothing. Okay. Shrug. Good talk. Look at another event. Why not? That's the shop I wanted to act for in the last game. That's right. The Dark Embrace. Desperately wanted a Dark Embrace. Heck it. Good fight. Demon form, extremely stinky. Give me a third spot weakness. That's where it's at. Hmm. 
That's where it's at. Second wind here? I don't think so, right? Spot weakness headbutt gets a kill. Or double spot weakness anger also gets a kill. Work or Calcum. Double immolate. Feel no pain. Second wind. Close enough. Take a little bit of damage, but that's nothing we can't just reaper back the next turn. Obliterated. Lex pot? Ancient pot could be a thing? I don't think so, though. M yo yo, thanks for the 28 months. Closing in on three years. By corruption in deck, do I think Dead Branch is the best relic in the game? Depends on the situation. Here, I, for example, I, I wouldn't say that Dead Branch is the best relic we could find. It'd be, it would be better to find something like the Gambling Chip. So that we can dig deeper into the deck to find the Corruption Dark Embrace. It runs Ashes would be pretty good, too. It runs Ashes would be plenty good. Yeah, Branch Pyramid can backfire. That's why you don't always want it. That's a lot of strength to gain on turn one. Demon Form can't do that, unfortunately. Can exhume the Reaper too. Very strong. Very, very strong. Set of my hand. Thank you. By yourself. Did. 18 block turn 3 is pretty good. I don't think I have enough attacks for rage to be good. Biggleby, thanks for the prime sub in the 23 months. One month away from two years. Happy to hear you're enjoying the content. Damn, yeah, still. Fun to make, fun to do, fun to be here on Twitch. Embrace Corruption turn one seems pretty good. Get some Bolton. Just take it. So we get doubled? It just kills you. Double Fiend Fire. Strength? No, I'll take a True Grit Plus, surely. More Exhaust to free up hand space. Plus good block. That's exactly what you want. Make this cheaper. Feel no pain upgrade is going to happen as well. Maybe the Dark Embrace upgrade too? Maybe. Maybe. Sorter.
Gremlin Horn. When an enemy dies, gain an energy, draw a card. You know, what we haven't seen yet this run is a Disarm. Or even any good source of weakness. Which means that uh, the incoming damage from the heart is going to be very scary. Be really nice if we could find even uh, a clothesline here. Uppercut or Shockwave also strongly welcomed at this point. Very much so. That said, I don't necessarily... Actually, was there a clothesline there? I don't think so, right? To make sure I don't accidentally ignore a clothesline if it's unupgraded. No, there wasn't. Okay. <laughs> Good talk. Gotta look a little closer than that. <laughs> it's fine, right? That's fine. Time for strength. Bonk. Play Corruption soon. Not yet. <clears throat> hmm. Just love this hand. Shrug for next turn. <clears throat> no fiend fire, huh? All right. Already at 13 by 4. That's right, because uh, Brimstone is scaling the Awakened One, which is very terrifying. Thankfully, we can block it. For now. Strength will only climb, and our block will only expire. But I don't foresee that being enough of a problem. Strength, I say. Perfect. Good. Tim. Prepare to be bonked, Tim. Local man literally too angry to die. For next act, not a bad idea here. Next 
turn. That's a kill. Wait, one more turn though? I'd love to. The ease with which we block these late game fights is pretty encouraging. Even though Time is doing very big damage. Don't seem to care. GG. Bayou Bengal with the prime sub in the seven months. Thank you, thank you. 2056. Have I been here before? Yeah, we could have killed a turn or two earlier, but not with the Pendib on nine, which is why we took a moment there to do what we did. Get yeah, one upgrade, could be Fiend Fire, Whirlwind, True Grit. I like having this True Grit upgraded so that it doesn't clog our hand if we get it early. Could have rested for a card reward, too. It's an interesting option. Burning Pack looks good. Another True Grit, maybe? Don't want the deck to run out of block. Which can happen in endgame fights here. Actually, wouldn't hate removing one defend, too. So. Let's do this, this, this. Yeah, membership card a little bit late here, huh? Alas. <clears throat> Lurking Fool says, Am I remembering wrong, or did the heart used to tell you how much damage had been dealt to it in total by all players? I think it gave you a total that you've done to it. I think that only happens if you do a non-heart run. That's why we haven't seen it in forever. Yeah, I think that's exclusive to non-heart runs. Spooky. Glad we have that burning pact here to get rid of these burns. Does how much damage? Hmm. This would be 26 times 4. Actually, more than that, right? We can do 32 by 4 plus 192 total. Yeah, we, we're good. And you're dead. All right, good fight. Elixir. Better than Gambler's Brew? Probably not. Offering plus. Hmm. Tricky choice. <laughs> Alright, welcome aboard, Offering Plus. Why the heck not? Alright, we have the Brimstone here, so this heart fight will be no joke. Do not underestimate this thing. What's our turn one supposed to look like? Probably not passing. That doesn't seem acceptable. Am I going to lose my second wind here? I don't really want to delete spot weakness or the other true grid, do I? I don't think so. Get rid of second wind. Okay. Then we can shrug. Almost strike. Headbutt Burning Pact? I think so. And then just get this out of my hand. Don't forget to play the Ancient Potion. Block the Vulnerable coming our way here. Okay, we lucked out with the multi-attack first. That's good. 
What's not good is the lack of feel no pains in my hands. And the fact that we drew the void is also bad. Guess I can just play the corruption though. If we burn through our deck too quickly, we'll run out of block here is my problem. Yeah, it could be worth gambling here. I would gamble everything except the Void, the Corruption, and maybe one of the spot weaknesses. Yeah, we, we also need to start doing damage very quickly here. Actually, I should play the Shrug at least. Spot weakness, spot weakness. Is there actually any benefit to gambling? Only if we find the offering. Right, let's find out. Not find offering. Let's do spot weakness anger. Or a Calcum, save me. There's offering. There we go. Looking a little bit better now. Zoom spot weakness here, get our damage up ASAP. Go to full health next turn. Yeah. We have to survive the next multi-attack. That is... Is that possible? Hmm, I sure hope so. With Fiendfire, it should be. Although I've got to be really careful not to delete my entire deck with double Fiendfire. Aw, huh. spooky. Okay, that'll be next turn. What anger is for, I guess. all the block for next turn? <laughs> Happy flower. So I can double immolate and then fiend fire? That would make more sense. Okay, that sounds better. So I can trigger the slime here. I think we're okay. Yeah, I think we're okay. It's only it's only 10 by 15 chat. Like, whatever, right? Just block that in my sleep. Easy. Surely this is fine. After panicking. And who can blame him? Delete this because I need it back. Let me double immolate. 
send Bean Fire. We get eight by nine. That's enough block. The important thing is we still have some cards. GG, Mr. Hart. GG. Close. Very close. But Brimstone gets there yet again. GG. GG. Windstone wins. I think Brimstone's massively underrated. This should show you why, right? No weakness. No disarm. Didn't kill the heart in five turns. Still won. Pretty cool. GG. Very GG. And yet another win for Necronomicon, also OP. Colin, win 20 will be another Brimstone run, I hope so. I would love a Brimstone run for run 20. Yeah, what Twitch chant has it been done? The spire sleepeth, but I shan't. GG. GG. I think we'll go again. Make it a three-run day. But first, Twitch chat's going to be a quick break. Going to refill the legs, stretch the water. Back in a few minutes. Magic Banjo says, planning to play any more FTL? Yeah, I've really been enjoying revisiting it, so I put it on the schedule for uh, tomorrow. Play some FTL. My plan for today is Against the Storm. Not quite settled with uh, with Against the Storm. I, I want to do a third Queen's Hand playthrough. And then I'll probably put down Against the Storm until they add another species. Balance and Blight post upgrades, huh? Cool. Yeah, I'm glad to see that Against the Storm is getting post-release content. Definitely curious what the, the next species will be. Miss Dungeon of the Endless, how was that? I thought it was pretty cool. The fun mix of exploring, resource management, and sort of hero roster building, and base defense. Towers, incoming enemy waves. Each run seems like it takes quite a long time, which is my only complaint about Dungeon of the Endless, is that it is a little bit repetitive and really long runs, but uh, I really like the core concepts going going into it. Frogs for six species. Zorg. The Frogman. Yeah, it really lived up to the name, right? Endless. Truly endless. All right, Twitch chat back in a couple minutes and we'll do some more clad. BRB.
All right, Twitch chat. We are back, and we're going to go for number three. Run number three to make streak number two. The old reset a -roni. It is a hexaghost act. I'm leaning more and more towards the philosophy of boss swap versus hexaghost with ironclad. Let's try that out. We get a mark of pain as our starting relic. So we put two wounds into the draw pile at each uh, sort of each fight. <clears throat> but we do have four base energy. And hopefully that'll be good enough. The minus draws can really hurt, especially in the early game, but the plus energy really helps. Will that even out or not? That is the question. Instantly getting uh, a little bit punished by those wounds, as you can see. We redrew them again, too. Oof. It's tough. Maybe take an early iron wave. Let's do it. <laughs> Block and damage all in one. Does Mark of Pain not affect turn one? It does not. Note how we draw the five cards and then the wounds get added. What's the thought process behind Swap being good specifically against Hexaghost? Hexaghost is a boss that requires less health for Ironclad to beat than the other two. And when you trade away your starting relic, that's what you're giving up is health. Health per fight. So my logic is that you can more afford to lose the starting relic against Hexaghost because you don't need the hit points to win the boss fight. That's the thought process. I don't know how true that ends up being, but that's my logic here. Hmm. Hmm. That's pretty good. P-Strike Plus makes going three elites very reasonable. Let's do this. Definitely makes Fire Breathing and Evolve more takeable. Almost required an Evolve. We're never going to be able to escape these wounds, unfortunately. It's back. Demon form is back. We have four energy already, so it's pretty takeable. I like it as a way to scale here. Sure. Welcome back, demon form. Can't get away from the demon form. Uh-oh. And the wizard is back as well. Although with four energy, this looks a bit safer. This looks a bit safer. Target the wizard second rather than first here. Though we do have to lose some health. Dang it. All right. Get out here. Actually, Bash Strike Strike would have just killed there. That would have been faster. Either way, we're through. Lash is no thank you. Body Slam, also questionable. Hemokinesis, it's better, but I don't really want to trade my health away. I say none of the above, thanks. You know, going into this Elite fight, I might actually upgrade um, Iron Wave for a bit more block over the demon form here. Bash upgrade also totally reasonable. Got to be one of these three. Have I ever manually upgraded a strike or de a defend? I have, yeah. Um, there have been runs where those have been my only unupgraded cards. 
I think maybe one time I've upgraded a strike because it's my best damage upgrade. But that's exceedingly rare. I'm going to do the Iron Wave upgrade, see how you feel about it. Come on, Demon Form. We just open Bash P Strike here, but uh, I'll wait. I'll wait. Okay, good. Not the bottom card, thankfully. Probably a take 20 or so kind of fight. Maybe if we're lucky, we take uh, only three more. Pretty good. Bash, Iron Wave, defend. And then we win. Rex do 18. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> it's back. The Helix is here as our first relic, because of course it is. Um, as is an early demon form, in case we want an early demon form. Anyone want to... Oh, wait. Hmm. Well, offering it is, then. Hmm. You love to see it. <laughs> but I don't love to see you. Oh, wait. <laughs> Brimstone's here. All right. Wait, hold on. Wait a second. Hold the phone. I don't know if I'm allowed to take that, actually. <laughs> that could be death more immediately than long term. Hexaghost with Brimstone is terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. I really do like it with a helix, though. Play. I gotta know how this plays out. Give me the brimstone. Makes the demon form kind of garbage, but oh well. Excellent place to fight a Matryoshka. I'll pick this one up. We'll eventually get all the extra relics. And it's really only eventually that I need strength. Once played a daily challenge where enemies have three more strength, but the boss was Hexaghost. That's tough. That's tough. That is a tough way to go. Fire pot here. Preserved Insect makes all of our elites easier to kill. Anger does really good damage with all this strength. Sure. Have I found my approach to Act 1 Super Elites has changed on Clad? I'm getting a better feeling, I think, for when I can get away with it. Just how much leeway the Clad has to... sort of go aggro. Or not. What do we need for Hexaghost? I'm not sure. I think a good potion, one might argue. A defensive potion would make it easiest. Whirlwind does seem like a pretty good addition here. Feeling the pain on sale helps a lot later, but not right now. Go pain, Whirlwind. See what we can find here. Disarm would also help against Hexaghost. Thank goodness, okay. <laughs> it's like, 
If we don't get Whirlwind turn one, this is going to be scary. But we did, so it's fine. There's a weak potion. Okay, that'll help a lot against Hexaghost. I'm probably going to need more than 20 hit points, too. Here's a heavy blade that we'll take. Okay, uh, I think this is going in the right direction. Boom. Just hit him. Dupe Pot. Now we're talking. And uh, Pommel Strike is just fine. Does damage and draws. And that's what we want. Anything that says draw is going to be good in this deck. Maybe Dupe Pot. Weak Pot. I like that. Giant Tiny Lagavulin. Could wait here, or I can just open with Bash P-Strike Plus, doing immense damage immediately, and then buffering the first hit. Seems fine. Bonk. Pretty much all the hands kill next turn. I think we're fine. Uh-oh. No! Duped it. Uh, it's fine. We're resting anyway, right? I think you feel no pain. Ron Scales will help with Hexaghost. Do we take another P-Strike? I don't think so. I think we have enough damage to get to the boss here. And I'd really rather not take a P-Strike when Heavy Blade is so much better. But there's no... <clears throat> no way we survive Hexaghost without uh, resting. Because the the turn 2 multi-attack will have plus 12 on it, right? So currently we get attacked for 3 by 6 on turn 2. Terrifying. And it only goes up from there, so we're going to need some... Restage. And even with this, we might have to Duplication Potion... Hmm... Heavy Blade or something. In order to avoid disaster. Five by six. Yeah, let's make that a three by six, please. That's way too much. Iron Wave upgrade looking good this turn. We don't take much damage here. Just three. And I guess I might as well play the demon form. Oof. That's a really bad bottom three cards, though. So yeah, maybe we um, do pot the heavy blade next turn with the straw order. This is really, really abysmal. Yeah, that's... that's bad. Please let me out of here. GG. Feed. Feed's a good way to counter Brimstone. As we can scale our max health by eating foes. Pretty difficult to land the feed in some fights, many fights even, but I'm sure we'll find a way. Maybe we'll get a pyramid again. And sometimes it'll just line up. So even if we only land it half the time, it's still pretty good. I think we can probably do better than half, because we do get the Pyramid. We can have double Pyramid Brimstone run. Sounds good to me. Other option is Pandora's Box. Transform the Strikes and Defends. Seems a little on the weak side. <clears throat> yeah, just a bit on the weak side. Is it bad to take Obnoxious Fumes on Silent just to strip Artifact? I don't think so. I think it's an acceptable way to, to help in late game fights. 
<clears throat> One of the big things it can do for Silent is remove the artifact from the hearts so that you can play your Piercing Whale, which matters quite a bit. Let's go Pyramid here. Really, really like Pyramid with Feed. Because it means we basically guarantee a max health up every combat. It's pretty good. If I want to go to a shop, this would be the one. I think we want to start here-ish. Green. Red. Something like this overall looks pretty good. A couple of elites are a good idea with preserved insects. I think we'll not have that much of a hard time in fights with them. I want to leave the option open. Would be nice to get feed upgraded. Posse Gonk with the Prime sub. Welcome to this cozy sub club. Heck yeah. Um, keep the Iron Wave, actually. Alright, just take damage. Thirty-six. We can try to feed with Offering, or we can just win right now. I think I'm just going to take the W. Chosen is spooky. These ain't it. Ooh, it feels good to have buffer. It's a good time. Tasty. Sing Red's okay with Pyramid, although we have four base energy, so it's not that okay. I don't think we need it, especially not with Offering. Don't really want a Hema or a Peace Strike either. I say we skip. Remove one card or upgrade all Strikes and Defends. Upgraded Defends make a fairly big difference here. Uh, and the upgraded Strikes won't hurt either. So, with nine cards getting upgraded and Pyramid, <clears throat> meaning that we usually want to play them, I say we go for upgrade all here. The truth is always simple. Yeah, Defend Plus is actually a pretty decent card. Got two good potions already. Let's take one more event here. Okay, let's see if I can find a better potion. Look at two. Hey, fruit juice, I'll take it. Discard this, pick this up, drink it, pick this up. Worth it. Totally worth it. Uh-oh. Well, now that's rude. Stinky snake plant, huh? Snake plant with brimstone. Very spooky. Fortunately, though, we can just kill it. It's the power of Brimstone. So what if the snake plant is scarier? It's dead. I don't think we want flex either. Let's fight an elite. I believe. Our first opponent is Triple Slavers. And I have to use both my potions. Or I could lose 15. Actually, is it both? No, I'm only losing 8 now. An improvement.
This is going well. Get the red skull. If our hit points are at or below half, we have three more strength. Because the deck wasn't strong enough. Take another heavy blade. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Uppercut, not too bad, but heavy blade, oh yeah. That's where it's at. More potions. Another free fruit juice. Let's go. <laughs> two potion events, two fruit juices. I love it. Love it. Vicky P says, oh my god, it's a windstone run. I see you weren't here for the last run, because if so, you would have said, oh no, it's another windstone run. How boring. Let's kill those nerds. Keep anger in hand. Not going to play offering yet. Okay, now I'm terrified. I could just take 13, double defend, buffer one hit, or I can play Offering and we can try to find a kill here. Let's see if I can get a kill. Oh, that's promising. I can play everything. I think we have it here. Need to do too much math. 39, 61, another 40, wait, goes to 61, goes to 40, no, we need to use a potion. Be slavers again, let's keep the fire pot then. Toxic egg. This is the egg we wanted uh, previously. So we had one this last run as well. Any skills will be upgraded is excellent. Especially the shrug plus looking good. We don't have a lot of block right now. Seen this run before. Have you though? Didn't have a regal pillow last time. Didn't have a turn to boat thingy last time. Didn't have a feed plus last time. Let's do it. With the toxic egg, I'm no longer worried about falling behind on upgrades by upgrading feed. So let's make it happen. Oh, and we can get exhum. Exhum plus feed plus can mean multiple plus four max healths per fight. That's very good. Striker move is also very good. Cauldron for five more fruit juice. Now you're thinking. Can't quite afford flame barrier. Could buy a potion. I think we're okay, though. Champ is going to freaking die, so whatever. Yeah, I don't need a potion here. It is these nerds again. How dare they? How dare they? By 642, so you would die. Hmm. It's gotta be something like this then. Please, sir, you have to live. Demand it. I'll play offering just for more max health. I must. There we go. Good work. Bottled lightning. We can bottle that offering. 
Probably want to do that. Heavy Blade Plus. I'll take it. Should probably take a clothesline, but I'm taking Heavy Blade. Bottle and Offering. Freaking go. Purple Fire Spirits. You know, I was kind of hoping we'd find this event, this run. I can lose this stupid demon form. Who even needs demon form? Give me 108 max health. Go for another event. Or we can take a guaranteed 4 max health. Maybe more. But what about Thwack? What about a relic? Hmm. Okay. Sure. Acceptable. Definitely acceptable. I have RNG fix? Yes, I use RNG fix here for stream. It is true. to do here. We're getting weakened next turn. I think that means it's bashing time. Start chipping away here. I can exhume offering if I want more oomph. It's not a bad idea. It's already below half, so you might as well go ham. Feudal Weakling. Have a free shot, he says, moments before death. But whose death? Hmm. Whose death indeed? 42 by 2. That's a big execute, sir. Do I even have a kill on you? 15 plus 21 plus 27. Probably. That would be 63. That would be enough. Yeah. With the potion, we definitely have it. Let me just double check, though. 21, 27. Yeah, we're there already. All good. Get eight, sir. Reaper is here. Reaper seems very good. So does Corruption, actually. This is a rerun of Last Run. Huh. Wait, which one do I want? I think I want the corruption. I think I want the corruption with the feel no pain and the pyramid. Reaper's pretty good for healing, but we do have other healing. We got Tornithopter and we have Regal Pillow. I'm gonna grab the corruption here. We go Phylostone Brimstone, that's terrifying. Black Star seems fine get a few more relics. We'll still have four energy pyramid, but a lot of additional stuff besides. Sure. It's only plus one. Surely they won't make a big difference in how much damage we take, right? Surely not. What, as they say, is the worst that could happen?
yeah, it could be pretty bad. <laughs> Thousand candles. Thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the cozy sub club. Dubbin and clubbin. Wing boots would be good here. Unfortunately, we saw them in a shop a while ago, so they are gone from this run. Hmm. Twenty-eight. I'm going to use a potion just for the heal, actually. So you might as well make it the fire pot, then. I also want to feed. Don't forget to feed. Here we go. Yeah, good potion use. Play the top card of your draw pile and exhaust it. It's not terrible yet. I don't think I trust it, though. I'll skip that. Could take 999 gold with only one... Well, actually, we could go to two shops. Would require skipping some elites, though. But I just take a boss fight and a rare relic. Sounds more reasonable here. Could also potentially feed multiple times if this were Slime Boss. Which it isn't. by two is quite a bit, actually. A spooky guardian man. Ten by four. Yikes. Crunchy. Get ginger. We're immune to weak. That'll make it a little bit easier to kill the heart early on. Battle trance is a good way to get cards into our hands. Sure, I like that over Flex, I think. Well, going this way, yeah, three leads, right? That's right. Cool. 143 gold for the red mask. I usually think about 100 is the right amount. This doesn't help us in our late game fights very much either, so I don't, I don't really love taking red mask in Act 3. It's more Act 2 that you want it for that turn one weekend. Oh, sure, I'll lose one of these unupgraded heavy blades. Three is probably too many. You can cut a strike at the shop as well. Seems perfectly fine to me. Me. Thanks for the six months of support. Yeah, basically the long and short of RNG fix is that it removes um, random events happening in a way that the player is able to predict. And other players have shown that you can, for example, do things like predict where Defect's Lightning Orb is going to hit ahead of time by observing other random outcomes in the game, and that can be used to gain a definitive advantage in your runs. So I'd rather just play without that sort of hidden, exploitable possibility 
and keep the game unknowable as it's meant to be. Makes the gameplay more interesting to me. We've had first corruption, yes, but what about second corruption? Should have taken that Reaper. Oh well. Yeah, basically adds an unfun metagame on top of Spire, which I don't think the game needs or wants. <clears throat> yeah, and, and once you it's also what I would call a cognitive hazard, in that once you are aware of how the RNG correlates, you cannot unknow it. I was hoping we'd see these two. Let's fight them. This time I don't have 32 health. I've got 117 health. I want to go burr. Whirlwind goes burr. This one. Perfectly fine turn one. Probably something like offering flex pot whirlwind. Just kill them. even exhume offering here. Although 14 by 6 is already plenty, right? That's 84. Okay, so that kills one but not the other. Take four. Six is exhume offering, so why don't we do that? Because I want to eat them both, that's why. Good answer. I want to eat them. Could I be so foolish? But we might not be able to draw the feed, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, maybe I can eat one of them. pretty good. 32 plus 18 gets there. Okay. Yeah, that could have been worse. We get magic flower. Healing is more effective during combat, affecting both our feed and the toy or ornithopter. And this sword boomerang has an upgrade, which will make me click on it. Sounds perfectly good. Sounds perfectly good. Lock cards, hello. And now your food. So just to be clear, when you have magic flower and feed, the magic flower will not increase the max health we gain. So we're still going to go to 132 max health when we land the feed. However, the current health that we get increases. So feed gains us four max health and then heals us for six. And then we heal four. No, we don't heal anymore. So we're going to go to 103 out of 132 instead of 102 out of 132 or 101 out of 132. 103 instead of 101. There we go. Like that. So we, it was max health plus four, but then plus six. Kind of interesting. Dual wield, another way to get more stuff in hand. I like dual wield with the feel no pain. I like dual wield with the feed. Get in here, dual wield. Gotta take the blue key here. No ice cream, but yes, potion belt with entropic brew. Amazing. Lucky find there. These jerks again. Hmm. Do I know what the most strength down? Hmm, most strength down. I know we've used malaise to bring Awakened One down to zero damage on their big hit. 
But I've done some pretty big strength down in my day. Another brimstone run? Yes, another runic pyramid brimstone corruption feel no pain feed run. With Helix again. You heard me. Cultist Pot's pretty cool. That'll help a lot for uh, Heart. I do like Bloodletting. Yes, I do. Especially now that we have Dual Wield. Like an energy generating card a lot. Welcome. Apotheosis is here. Dolly's Mirror is here. I guess Apo's not that good, huh? Hmm. Another Exum is here, too. Why not triple feed against Darklings? Because you can't, is the short answer. Against the Darklings, only the kill that ends the fight will count for uh, fatal effects. So you cannot farm feeds on Darklings. Yeah, remove here is really good. I like remove strike quite a lot. I don't actually know if I want any of the other stuff. Oh, weaken. We want weaken, don't we? I should probably take this on sale clothesline. And then upgrade it. Yeah, we want weaken. But I agree that our mirror targets are not good here. What about dollies on feel no pain for hearts? That's what the dual wield is for. We could also buy the dupe pot for that. And I can buy Duplication Potion and Clothesline? I might do that. Yeah, I'm going to do that. We'll just duplicate it. That means we want to upgrade Feel No Pain, though. Basically, as soon as possible. Here's another fight. We cannot um, farm feeds here, as the daggers are minions, so we don't gain max health if we eat, a if we eat them. Not allowed, unfortunately. Get corruption down. You. Keep the dual wield for later. Okay, this is looking decent. Hmm. Pretty sure I killed Repto this turn. dead. Easy. We get plus one strength. We get meat on the bone to heal us if we're below half. We get blood potion to heal us a lot. This is an obscene amount of health, actually. 20% of our max health plus five times one and a half. That's a huge blood potion. And another bloodletting. Get in here. all coming together. Yeah, we triple feed in this fight, maybe? That'd be nice. Means I have to not kill them right now. Bummer. but still worth it, I'm pretty sure. Hold. Yes. Is 
Three feeds, please. Nom. Nom. And Nom. 12 max health. Sting Red plus, Arma plus, Dual Wield plus. Guess I'll take one Armaments. That can upgrade the other Heavy Blade. It's another skill for Corruption. It's fine. As for the last Elite, it will be the Giant Head, who's pretty weak against Brimstone decks, I would think. Good punch, sir. I'm immune to that. You ridiculous fool. And then presumably we just kill it on this turn. Definitely. Didn't even need to play a bloodletting. Delicious. Get ink bottle plus letter opener, rewarding us for playing lots of skills. And we can take exhume to get even more skills. Alternately, this intimidate is not terrible for hearts. I'm gonna take the intimidate over another exhume here. We can dig. We can dig. No, we're upgrading uh, Feel No Pain. Definitely. Not that. There. And then probably upgrade Clothesline next. Rather than digging. Hello. <laughs> Target Donu first, as usual. Targeting the one that scales their strength. Get block out of the days, so whatevs. We'll lose whirlwind here. I want corruption down. Interesting, we seemingly never found a way to deal with these wounds, though. A slight issue. is full. Okay, good turn. Now we just finish the job here on Donu. Nom. Go! You're dead. Good. Very tasty. Hey, Sketch, thanks for the Prime sub and the seven months of sub port. Awaken one, we can eat three times in this fight, and I'm going to. Oh, yes. 
We're going to do it. Also just going to play Offering right away here. But I'm not going to play Intimidate right away. I want to play it next turn to guarantee the multi-attack. It's weakens. It's fine. It's going Papa. The Iron Caled. He's doing his best. He's eating his way through the Spire today. Right now it benefits me to just kill them all, but I want to eat them. Uh, time to play a lot of attacks. Bonk. Bonk. Okay. Feed Y. Y feed. Feed no. I should probably kill a bird, but I'm not going to. Not yet. I can wait one more turn. Hmm. Meat value activate. Feed value activate. All right, paid off. Nom. Nom. Easy game. Um, please exhume offering, I guess. It's time to kill this thing. Oh, yeah. Can't feed on this phase. We have to kill it and eat the next one. Delicious. We heal 18 from the meat there, too. We have 176 max health. Two thump, two thump, two thump. Deep pulsing dread. Could be felt throughout the room is this. The heart of the spire. The source of all this max health. Bonk that thing for 2207. Oh, my. Oh, my. Let's upgrade that clothesline. We're going to heal for 15 at the shop, meaning we go to 172. That's plenty of health. Upgrade this. That's the highest max health I've ever had in a normal run. Unseated, I remember getting to about just below 300. With Seated, we've done 453, and you could easily do a lot more with a Seated run. In fact, you can do an essentially infinite amount with a Seated run if you do Nightmare Nightmare Wish things. Hmm. I'll offering first. Cool. So this is our plan for heart, is dual wield the feel no pain.
we don't take too much. Still more than I would have liked, but we have so much healing next turn. Or next fight. Whatever you want to call it. With the potions, that is. Before 32, not quite. Only Boomerang cooperated. Could make something happen here, but we're just a little shy on the Spire Shield kill, looks like. That's fine, we'll kill the Spear first then. Like I said, we've got healing galore here. Zoom feed now, though. Anchor and bag of marbles. Rage plus and battle trance. Okay, rage actually seems like a good way to get block here. Is there a maximum amount of money? I don't think so. No, I don't think so. All right, 180 health plus all of the good stuff really ought to make the heart pretty straightforward here. Dude, pot on clothesline is an interesting option. Hopefully we drink the cultist potion turn one for an extra one strength per turn. Note that we heal eight per potion we use. Wait a little bit on feel okay here. Do I do it? I kind of do like dupe clothesline here. Yeah, it is multi-hit first, unfortunate. Hmm. Rip buffer, I guess. At least we got card draw. Here we go. Like to armor the other feel no pain? I'd like to do that. So we just bash now then. At least we're doing very good damage. Gonna have three wounds stuck in her hand, though. That's not very good. Alright, how much does this blood potion heal? 54 plus 8. Dear lord. What's in here? Okay, pot, garbage potions, but they're each 8 health, so that's good. Hands terrible. Ugh. This is better to remove artifact with five turns a week already. Hmm. Yeah, these wounds are a real problem here. Need to kill it quick.
spooky. But here we go. Like this order isn't great. Get all the fuel and paints down. A bit late though. Ow. Glad we had lots of health. We're certainly taking lots of damage. Turn though, we're good. Easy peasy. GG. Another windstone run. Makes it all the way. GG. GG. Be free, my essence of steel friend. Be free. Not too bad. Pyramid Helix once again teaming up to deliver a victory here. Can't say no to it. GG. Brimming with success. Were those the worst draws we could get? Not quite. Could have been worse. Definitely could have been worse. Has it been done, Twitch chat? The spire sleeps, so shall I. How often do I think I win when I get more than 150 max health? Almost always. At least 95% of the time. Potentially more. That's a, a very secure place to be in. Yeah, as Killer Sheep says, pretty hard to make a deck that doesn't have at least one losing draw in Act 4. If the game really wants to, you could be handed a, a particularly nasty order. That prevents you from doing really anything. Uh, one of the easiest ways to lose for a non-pyramid run is to draw all of your setup at the same time, but you don't have enough energy to play it all in one turn. So you have to choose which power to put in play per cycle. And if you can't get everything down, you might not win at all. And then there's the Void, which really adds some chaos there. You know, you could draw, like, Corruption, Demon Form, Void. You have two energy, and then you just cry. Discard the cards, never see them again. Is the change on A18 making Spear add the burns to the top of the deck the nastiest buff that an opponent gets on any Ascension? Probably, especially considering that there are other buffs to the Spear and Shield on that Ascension as well. That's when the... the the big attack becomes 99 block for the spire shield, for example. So, yeah, that's a that's a pretty big power spike. I'd say the other one that's really, really nasty is when the Act 1 slimes. I think Ascension 17. When the Act 1 slimes change their attack pattern to be more aggressive. It can no longer debuff twice in a row. That's pretty nasty. Ever lost due to a completely unplayable hand? Probably. I'm sure I've 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 definitely died to five days draw against centuries. That's certainly happened. I'm sure many people can relate. Um, or five slime against slime boss can be a, a losing draw too. Birds taking four hits to knock out of the air. It's a big one, too. Did I die once to fiend firing all of my remaining cards? Yes! Exclamation point. Exclamation point empty. There's a link to that one. Where I accidentally deleted all my damage cards and then died to shield and spear. 
Legion says, I managed to die with a full hand of burns against Hexaghost. Seen something similar to that happen. Used to disrespect re repulsors, but they've put you in your place on High Ascension. Low-key, double... Re Speaking of disastrous draw orders, by the way, one of the low-key, most dangerous fights that Spire has is double repulsor, double exploder. You could just have four days to add it to the top of your draw pile for two turns in a row, and then you get exploded for 60 damage. Because of how RNG the both draw order and the repulsor pattern is, that almost never happens. But it can definitely... Uh, definitely change things. And yes, I, I do use a different mic from that clip. My voice, I think, has changed over time. Somewhat natural for especially people who use their voice a lot for the, the voice to change over the years. So I, I do think I sound somewhat different now compared to a couple years ago. But the different microphones, the big difference. We're using a Shure MB7 now, and I had a different mic before. Dad jokes lead to dad voice. Yeah, it's also natural a, a voice change for a growing boy. I'm, I'm closing in on my mid-30s here. So I think it's kind of when the, the father voice comes out. I am not a dad in real life. I just play one on TV. I father all of my species in Against the Storm, which is where we're headed next to Twitch chat, is to some cozy storming. been a little bit since we dived into some Against the Storm. Um, our second Queen's Hand mode was indeed successful, and I really enjoyed that. So I think I want to do at least one more Queen's Hand mode playthrough. I'll go into a breakdown of what exactly that is and how we think about it in a couple of minutes. But first, it's break time. I'm going to refill the legs, stretch the water, all that jazz. When I return... We'll be embarking upon a new settlement. Don't go nowhere.
All right, everybody, we are back. Thanks for hanging out through the long break there. Grab myself a quick sandwich. That's pretty good. So let us start a new Queen's Hand mode. Playthrough of Against the Storm. So, if you're not familiar with this game at all, it's one part settlement builder, one part roguelike. Uh, the idea is that you're managing up to three different species of villager in a completely peaceful, there's no enemies or anything like that, no military units in this game, just buildings resources that you have to balance and uh, a resolve number, a happiness level for your villagers. Paired with a sort of seasonal yearly mechanic. Usually the game is just stay alive. Open face hot dog. <laughs> Wouldn't call that a sandwich necessarily. So, in Queen's Hand mode, we're playing a special roguelike mode. Normally, this game is one with meta progression. There's sort of a, an unlock tree that you're progressing through uh, that you get resources from each settlement for. And that'll give you gradually stacking bonuses as well as unlocking more complexity into your runs. <clears throat> Here in Queen's Hand, we start with all of the complexity, but none of the bonuses, and we're asked to, in a single Blightstorm cycle, take on the highest difficulty seal, a Prestige 20 seal, located very, very far from the capital, here in the corners of the map. And the goal is, uh, get stuff. Just get some stuff. And reforge that dang seal. Oh, cool. I like our option for first settlement here. We can get a double royal resupply. With the first one. Playing with uh, no fertile soil and no refund for destroying building. That one's a little tricky, but neither of these are particularly difficult modifiers. So we should be able to get a ton of machinery for doing that as well. And machinery is very valuable here in Queen's Hand Mode. Yeah, get some stuff is the goal here. We have to, we have to collect many different resources of many different kinds in many different contexts. And then sell it all to the trader, usually. I wonder how much it costs to start with uh, planks. And then it's cornerstone pool increase, cornerstone pool increase, blueprint increase, blueprint reroll. And these are always locked in. These So these four bottom ones are the upgrades that we have for the whole run. And then we'll get a 25 additional pick one of three where we're choosing what type of small bonus to get. Every node gives us a, a very minor passive, but when accumulated, 25 minor passives adds up to quite a bit. So this does, does matter quite a lot. And then the additional effects can be important things. New embarkation bonuses, the ability to level up the hearth pass level one, something we don't have right now. Uh, and a few other things are kind of hidden in here, like the various house blueprints for the species. Those choices only get re-rolled when we pick one. So it's it's definitely only one of these three. And then these four are all we get for the whole run, for the bottom ones, the fundamental upgrades. So the hexagonal map here is the, the overworld map, which is going to modify our individual play sessions, one settlement is one sort of town placed on one of the tiles here. And therein lies the main game.
What is this? Storm lasts longer every year. Hmm. Glade warnings being disabled is not a hard one either. We might actually want to start with the haunted forest and then jump to the royal woodlands and then jump to the gathering storm. Definitely want to complete lots of settlements that are adjacent to locations. Each one gets us a royal resupply, which can be more seal fragments, and we'll need lots of those. Um, they can also be... Uh, they're also going to be machinery or artifacts, both of which are going to be important too. Let's see, previously I've tried starting on S Prestige 2. That's when you get the base longer lasting storms. The goal here is to win our settlement in as few years as possible, because that's what's going to form the, the greater strategy for Queen's Hand Mode, where we need to collect a lot of total resources. We need lots of seal fragments. We need lots of food. We need lots of machinery and artifacts, all to prepare us for the end game here. Looks like there's a lot of question marks in this quadrant of the map. Like, compared to compare this part of the map with uh, this part of the map. That's a huge difference, right? <clears throat> Looking at lots of these can be very helpful. Many of them are events with uh, semi-permanent bonuses that we'll want. This one's okay, but... This feels like some of the highest density over here. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. How hard would it be to do the whole challenge on Prestige 20? You are allowed to play P20 immediately if you want to. From what I've seen, it is impossible to do this without exploits. Um, which is to say, you would need to... There are, there are micromanagement finaglings that you can do with uh, feeding your villagers. You can disable food consumption, let villagers get one or two stacks of hunger, and then refeed them. Um, you can also tick water consumption up and down to get basically all of the benefits of um, water engines with none of the downsides, if your timing is correct. And I think there's some other shenanigans you can do with, for example, woodcutters camps with um, ugling them in some way. <clears throat> And these things can, can provide a pretty powerful advantage. So, so there is footage out there of uh, Prestige 20, Queen's Hand, First Settlement being done. But without using things that seem like they're unintended and, and definitely um, OP, I, I haven't seen any evidence that you can just win the First Settlement on Prestige 20 without... You just on core gameplay fundamentals. It doesn't seem like it's possible. Because you have so many penalties stacked on top of you, and so few initial advantages that you'll just get completely stomped by uh, Prestige 20. So, I, I think it would be effectively impossible. How many hours am I at the, into this game? Uh, about 200 at this point. Of our starting options here, I really like humans starting with uh, 15 planks. So what's the difference between Prestige 2 and Prestige 6? We get a little bit more food and one more seal fragment. That's when buildings cost more, though. I don't want to do that. We could do Prestige 5. That does give us the more food. Prestige 5 might actually be better than Prestige 2. Just slightly. Prestige... Prestige 3 adds Blight Rot every third clearance season. 
This isn't really enough Blight Rot to be a problem, and it's actually potentially beneficial if the player gets certain cornerstones. So I kind of like that one. Prestige 4, making blueprint rerolls cost more, has literally no effect. Because we don't have the ability to reroll blueprints. <clears throat> Villagers with low resolve leaving faster is a pretty minor penalty. I don't mind that one. Although it looks like there's actually no difference in payout between P4 and P5. So maybe we should try Prestige 4 then. As we get a little bit more food. In order to get the 6th Seal Fragment, we have to pay 50% more for our buildings, and I don't think that's worth it. Would it be bad to do runs on Veteran? I think Veteran is really good for the extra hard um, world map modifiers. If you have to do no pause or no trade or no orders to get a location, then Veteran is a really good idea. Or the uh, Ancient Battlefield, plus, one f uh, plus 50 hostility multiplied by your difficulty is really good to do on Veteran instead of Viceroy or Prestige. Because otherwise you get 150 hostility, and that's way too much. How's it going, XDEF? Grats on winning Spire with Perfected Strike Sneko Eye. The perfect run. Okay, I, I also like going here first because it means I get to play a Cursed Royal Woodlands map, and we haven't done that in forever. So let's be humans with extra planks playing on Cursed Royal Woodlands. getting the full payout for this, right? Yeah, same for here or here. And I want to be able to go here next. So yeah, here. And we don't know which glades are dangerous or forbidden. Wait, isn't that already the, what happens with Curse Royal Woodlands? Wait a minute. Oh, that's Coral Forest. Okay, that's different then. Coral Forest, not Curse Royal Woodlands, excuse me. <laughs> I'm blind. To be fair, they do look kind of similar. This this is the Curse Royal Woodlands, this darker purple. Okay. Yeah, I'm just confused. Well, I guess I get to play that uh, over here then. The Gathering Storm, spooky. Very spooky. Okay, that means we get to embark. That's right, there's a harvesting bonus on this biome for each hostility level. And then we have our four prestige modifiers. Takes more points to win. Storm season lasts longer. We get automatic blight rod cysts. And blue re plint rerolls costs whatever. But it's more that I, I wanted to have the additional blight rod cysts, because we might benefit from that. So, dangerous and forbidden glade warnings are disabled, but we can still infer the identity of some of the glades. Small glades are still smaller than regular, than the dangerous glades, so we can tell those apart. And my understanding is that the forbidden glades cannot spawn adjacent to your starting glades, so we know that these large glades that are adjacent to our glade are all dangerous glades. And only the ones further out could potentially be forbidden. So that should make things pretty straightforward. As usual, we start with a handful of villagers, a warehouse, and an ancient hearth that needs to stay lit in order for everybody to be happy. Also got exactly one lizard. Guess what, lizard? You are in party town. 
Please enjoy your life. Have a good time. You get preferential treatment and, in your view anyway, the best job in town. Good way to be. Let's see. No need to build a trading post just yet. We want to get our initial woodcutters camps up. On this map type, there's three types of trees, and each type of tree has uh, different resources hidden within it. Very notably, it's very easy to get access to metal on this map type because the muscle sprout trees, which are arguably the best of these three tree types, um, give you a chance for meat and a chance for uh, crystallized dew, which can be used to make tools and pipes and stuff. The red ones give rocks with a chance for incense, and the green ones just give a small chance for plant fibers. Seems to me like the green ones are bad compared to the others, but um, arguably, I guess less secondary stuff means your woodcutter's camp storage would fill up less frequently, and therefore you'd be able to gain wood more quickly. So probably the green are best if you need wood quickly, is my guess here. These should be made yesterday. What are you guys doing? See. My base preference has changed. No, those have been saved. Okay, so we have only wood enabled by default. That means we get to keep our starting coal. So, starting about a minute into the game, plus once per year at the end of the storm, we get a cornerstone. Basically, we pick a passive perk from one of multiple choices. Kind of like other roguelites, the intention is to have perks that interact with other gameplay effects, such that if you can find synergies, you then you have something that's strong. Um, but you might also have perks that don't do anything. Yeah, as as Tupert says, cool 10 amber. These aren't exactly what I would call inspiring or good perks. On one hand, we have driving water, giving us a woodcutting speed increase based on how much rainwater we've used. Actually, that could be a thing. We'd have to be pretty ambitious with rainwater to get uh, a woodcutting increase, but this would be a good map to get more woodcutting speed on. But don't totally hate driving water. Or we could take Secure Trail, causing newcomers to arrive faster. Basically, we can balloon the population of our settlement quickly. That actually so seems like surely it is best at the very beginning of the game, so maybe we try that out, actually. If we keep taking the newcomers, we can quickly get to the 30 or so population threshold that I consider to be the ideal for a settlement. Normally it takes quite a long time, and if you don't get uh, a lot of settlers early, it can really be a struggle bus. So let's take this. This also means that the first newcomer should arrive faster, meaning we'll have them before the storm even begins, maybe? I like that. Try that out. Of course, more people means we have to feed them, but usually more people means you can produce more stuff because you have more jobs. Just two veggie nodes and two reed nodes to start for food. Not a whole lot, but perfectly adequate. What kind of decor do we want? I want a wall today. Actually, the gate counts as three and looks pretty cool. there. Here. Need... Wait. Yeah. You need four decorations to level up your hearth to level two. As well as eight house people, and that will give a global resolve bonus, which is quite nice to have. What are the map event modifiers? Good question. Our positive bonus. Anyone with a house has a 20% chance to double their yield, so even better reason to get the houses up fast and to make sure everybody has a house. That's a nice one. That's a really nice one. Um, our negatives look tough, though. Burning blight rot cysts takes longer. Okay, that's kind of annoying. Building materials produce less goods. That's nasty. Greater Threat, one of my least favorites. 
an additional global resolve penalty during the storm. And then hostility 5, charged rain, people just die. So this will be a game of hostility control. Can we keep hostility at 3 or lower? If not, it's going to be a tough time. Will I be playing Frostpunk 2? Maybe. I thought the first Frostpunk was alright, and I would be open-minded to at least looking at a sequel. Seeing what's improved, what's changed. Do the children still yearn for the mines? And overtime. So, as for our quests and our upgrades, we should at least look at the first upgrade. Usually, though, when it comes to uh, the early picks for these things, I favor optionality. Coin I term for Spire. I guess it does kind of apply here. Essentially, delaying your decision until you gain more information so that you can make a more informed decision. With regards to orders, that means delaying picking the orders so that we can acquire more time to work on a timed order. Or just potentially having more information about uh, what's available. And with blueprints, it often means knowing the contents of a dangerous glade before you pick a production building, which can also be very handy. Ultimately, recipes are nice and all, but you have to have raw resources at the very beginning of your production chain. So it makes the most sense to see what raw resources you have and then pick, re then pick recipes that are made out of that. Because otherwise you won't be able to make anything. Yeah, another roguelike delivery mechanism, definitely. Yeah, I really enjoy the, the the rogue thinking that this this game forces at large. Everything, just like with Spire, there's a lot of contextual goodness or badness to things. It's not so cut and dry as making a tier list and following it. And sometimes you just have to use the subpar option to get the job done. Because a bad tool is better than no tool at all and can still get the job done. During year one, my goal usually is get everybody a house. Um, let's get another house, actually, because we know more people are coming shortly. Uh, usually build the trading post also. There we go. Trading post could be moved after the fact, so that's no biggie. As well as get up my initial woodcutters, camps, and food camps. Basically, all, all the basics. Get all the roads built. And then halfway through the first storm, we'll cut into our first dangerous glade, which I think I'll make this one, since it's closest to the central warehouse here. No donut? Not not for this sieve. We, we decided to go with a, a wall. Big ol' wall. We can go to a little bit faster here. Donut wall incoming. If only you could, uh... I guess I could make a, a sort of 8-bit donut. Wouldn't be very curved, though. Not so much a toroid as a square. gonna make the makeshift post. Those newcomers. <laughs> what causes hostility? Great question. So there are a number of factors that contribute to hostility, some of which can be controlled 
good time for the auto pause. Uh, some of which can be controlled on the fly, some of which can't. So, something you cannot control on the fly. Years past, every year adds 45 hostility. 100 points of hostility equals one hostility level. So, staying under four hostility means 399 or less hostility. Every small glade we open is 15. Every forbidden or dangerous glade we open is 30. That means we want to open primarily dangerous or forbidden glades, as they contain far more than twice the resources that small glades do on average. That's why small glades aren't really worth it in this game. Sometimes they are, uh, especially if you know what they contain ahead of time. But um, for the hostility price, it's often better to just open a small number of dangerous glades. Every villager we have is more hostility, just six points. Every villager who's a woodcutter is an additional 24 that we can control on the fly. Every additional hearth we have will reduce it by 30, and every point of impatience we have will reduce it by 30. So we can reduce, imp or, uh, reduce hostility by unassigning woodcutters, by gaining impatience. Um, that's part why, partly why the lizard is being the hearthkeeper right now, is to build impatience to reduce our hostili hostility, as the humans provide an impatience reduction as their bonus. Um, and we can also make more hearths. How many points did our lizard make? 0. 0.06. Good job, lizard. Pro strats. Okay, here's the newcomers. Harpies are the third species. That's pretty cool. I don't think I want the harpies right now. We're only getting two additional people, which immediately makes me grateful for the perk we took, because we won't have to wait too long to get the next group. Yeah, harpies will be very unhappy the moment they join, so welcome, lizard human. In this game, the primary goal, or one of the primary goals, rather, is to keep the resolve of our different villagers at a high level. Each villager has, according to their species, a bunch of likes uh, that will give them bonuses. Each one has a couple, like, three or four food preferences, uh, and two or three service preferences. Service is giving a, a large bonus, and food's usually giving a small bonus. Humans like porridge, biscuits, pie, and clothing. Lizards like jerky, skewers, pie, and pickled goods. So there's some overlap there with pie. <laughs> Humans enjoy leisure and religion, whereas lizards enjoy brawling and religion. So another overlap there with religion. Religion would be a good way to go on this map, because we can get incense just from the trees. Uh, although that wouldn't be able to provide a ton of religion. It would be a nice little one-time bonus. Who for thought? Okay. We'll be picking our orders momentarily. Oh yeah, I wanted to look at the trade routes. That's right, there's not a lot of trade routes available at the beginning. Because we only have the capital to trade with. High religion, you say? That's right. You heard me. The pie religion. We should make a harvester's camp. I usually like to cut into the first dangerous glade around the middle of the first storm. That will coincide pretty well with the arrival of the trader, so that you can trade goods with them to deal with the dangerous glade event that you get. Okay, I think now is the time. So I'd like to look at the orders first. Joyful Lizards. Keep Lizard Resolve above 18 for 30 seconds to get 5 meat per minute. 
That doesn't sound so hard. We were practically already doing that earlier. Five meat per minute is a very good uh, food addition to the settlement. It's funny, this actually timed order where waiting has hurt me. First time I've seen that. I'll still take it though, I think we can do it easily. All of the ruins. Discover three glades and rebuild or salvage one ruin. This is very rewarding, but very hard to do. I would likely be wasting my pick, I think, to pick this. I've failed this quite a few times. Funding the expedition, meanwhile, nice and easy. Just deliver five tools. We get some nice building materials and a bunch of parts. That one I like quite a bit. Two glade events, five building materials to get four villagers. Or deliver seven pack of crops to get bonus pack of crop production. No, thank you. I don't really like trying to deliver pack of crops, generally speaking. I like that we can get four more people with this one. Although the building materials can be a pain in the butt, too. So, now we head into here. And then we can pick our buildings, too. I like delaying the building picks until after you've seen the Glade contents, also because it can help you make decisions if you find a water geyser of any kind. Like a stormwater geyser here. Now we know that buildings that are piped via stormwater can benefit from quite a bit here. So, what do we got? We got a large, just one, worm tongue nest. Reason to get a trapper's camp unlock. Two abandoned caches here. One contains 80 food in case we're really hungry. That's a good backup plan. The other one contains 40 food, 40 grain, 30 copper ore. Ooh, I might break that one open because we can use 30 copper ore to make four packs of building materials. And that would that would solve most of clearing glades. Um, also, this is a glade event, so completing it would also count for clearing glades, the other half. So yeah, so I'll probably break that one open. Uh, we can do that using the rocks that are in here. Lastly, of course, there's a dangerous glade event. This is a something that has to be dealt with, or there will be a penalty. This is actually one of the penalties you can ignore early. So that's kind of cool. Tear it down, which takes... Oh, that spawns blight rot cysts based on our food production. But we can turn off food production for a little bit. Early game here. That's a very reasonable choice. Uh, that would give us plus two to grain production. Interesting. Where we can cleanse it for points. We actually have enough crystallized dew. So if I made the blight post... Can I do that? I would need three bricks. That's not hard to get, though. We have all the stone we need. So if I want to, I could gain a point out of this. As well as 20 ember. That's actually very valuable. Um... Takes 18 reputation to win, and usually we get a blueprint for doing this successfully. So that's quite valuable, actually. And, and knowing that we can ignore the penalty here, that gives us more reason to take the slow route. I'm always happy to see large rock nodes. They're super duper good. They give you lots of stone, which is great. They don't take an advanced camp type to mine, so they're always free, and with 60% chance of secondary food production, they're also a really good source of food, which is what you're hoping for from your first couple glades. So, always happy to see that. Let's see, can we make a warehouse? No. Not until we get some tools. That almost means that we could cut into another dangerous glade here. I want to do it. Although that could make it hard to get high lizard resolve, huh? Feeling ambitious. 
feeling really ambitious. Let's do it. What's in here? Shipwreck. Two more caches. Large vegetable nodes. Okay, so that's good reason to take off Forager's Camp. Cool. Very cool. And that'll sort us, as well as another geyser. Okay, that'll, that'll sort us for quite a while. Destroys a random cornerstone. Takes coats to search the upper deck. Or all of our parts to search the lower deck. Ooh, that's spooky. This is a tough one. The shipwreck. Hmm. Definitely gonna need some help from the trader with this one. We'll sort that out soon. Uh, what's in the caches? Wildfire essence. Five parts. Okay, so we could actually search the lower deck with the parts if we really want to. And that would get us another point. I kind of dig that. Do we know our first trader? It will be Zorg. He'll be here in a minute. Okay, so let's take Forger's camp. We got Lumber Mill. Rainery can make pickled goods and fabric. I don't think I would ever take Weaver. Lumber mill versus granary is a tough choice. Zora can probably sell us some food to make the lizard quest a bit easier. Seems likely. It's really hard to turn down this many planks. Let's do it. Got the stormwater hookup for it, too. Pie? Brick oven is the ultimate pie producer. So then we would only need to take a, another flower producing building. I often have trouble maintaining pie production. But I want to see if we can do it again. Okay. So, oh, that's right. Tricky, tricky. Okay, we'll be searching the lower deck during the next year. We need to make a road to the rocks. We also need to make a... Don't cut her scam. So our first priority is to get the Joyful Lizards quest done. Then we can deal with the events. Shouldn't be too bad. Please cut all of the awesome muscle trees. They're great. Oops. Zorg. Let's look at the cornerstone first. Ooh. Double loot from abandoned caches is reckless plunder. So we can actually get 10 parts from that cache and use it to complete the uh, event completely. Cheap construction is also very good. All buildings cost 40% less. That would also give us more parts indirectly.
like both of those quite a bit. Taking another look at the caches here. Oh, that's pretty sweet to double that. That would be enough copper ore to totally solve the clearing glades thing. Would be a ton of food. I really like reckless plunder here. Let's do it. Hello. Zorg has planks too, as well as tools. We want lizard food. There's jerky here. Wouldn't need to feed them very much. Four jerky would be more than enough, quite frankly. Hmm. So yeah, we're definitely going to search the lower deck then. Okay. Currently, lizards are going to 15 happiness. So plus four would get them to 19. 18 is plenty. I think I need to also buy pie or anything ridiculous. Really not. Only 112? Nice. Very affordable. Wait, how much if I also want for pie? Still affordable. Okay, let's do that. Lock this in then. Uh, tell the humans that the pie is not for them. It is only for the lizards. Yes, that's unfair. Too bad. Soon the lizards will rule us all. We're already making the stonecutters camp. Don't be silly. Don't be silly. Was the reason for opening a second dangerous glade yeah because because the first glade was free so i was still in a position to open a dangerous glade and deal with the event i decided to go for another one It gave us more information immediately, too, right? Like, I was able to see that we had large mo um, broccoli, and then I could pick the uh, the food camp for it. So it, it did pay off, too. Bye, Zorg. All right. Oh, we get tools from that, too. So we can also complete funding the expedition immediately with the tools from this. That's the other reason I really like funding the expedition, because you usually immediately complete it with the rewards from a different thing. So I'm just going to click one, two, easy peasy. Now we have enough parts for the merchant shipwreck. Send these lizards to search the lower deck immediately, which does spike our hostility. Dramatically, which means we need to make sure this finishes before the storm begins, which will currently happen. We also get two blueprints, small farm, plantation, granary. We we'll even have fertile ground. Nope. So, granary it is. Oh. Grill versus smokehouse. That's kind of cool. Carpenter is also nice, as we can make tools. That said, I'm planning on busting open most of these caches for the double rewards. The three-star skewers. Make that with meat and vegetables. We can make lots of skewers, which give a large bonus to lizards. And this is meat plus fire specialization, so lizards have double specialization at the grill. Grill is awesome here. 
bonus points we can make ale if we really want to. And it uses drizzle water, which we can get a hookup for. Do you have any pipes, Zorg? No. We can make pipes out of uh, the crystallized dew we get from the trees. So if I need more pipes, I can just make them. Cool. Yes, that's awesome. Uh, oh yeah, I did want to buy these planks from you, Zorg. Maybe some of them anyway. I have lumber mill? And I have 1010. Actually, no, we're good. We're going to make our buildings now. You're going to move over somewhere where you're irrelevant. Way over here. Okay, let's get the lumber mill right in the center. We can make the brick oven as well. No, we should make the grill first. Grill is definitely preferred here. We can unfavor the lizards now. Probably make another house. Okay, life is, I think, good. Don't need to make a blight post. Wait until... So the parts have already been used. So yes, I can make the blight post. There. High hostility in this map isn't always bad. That's right, we're actually getting a uh, bonus yield. In fact, I can increase that by putting one more woodcutter. We have a 3% chance per hostility level for double yields, which is quite cool. Uh, just don't want it to happen during the storm, right? Charged rain would just kill our villagers. That would be terrible. Let me make one more of these, too. Okay, the lumber mill is online. Make very efficient plank production out of that. See you later, Gimp back. Thanks for dropping by. Mister's camp is donezo for now. We're gonna stop working there for the moment. Please help finish building stuff. Let's start making planks. Twenty rocks right now. That would allow us to open a cache immediately. I'll take that. No surprise, the harpies are pissed instantly. Mm -hmm. Do we just lose the harpy? Ballad strategy for a little while. Where's the one with parts in it? This one. We'll also get 70 clay out of this and a million berries. Good luck. Yes. 30 left on that. Um, how do I prevent the harpy from leaving? I guess favoring them and having the lizards, the, the resolve will drop lower. Drop slower, rather. So that's not too bad. Use the meat and the vegetables for skewers, preferably. Do you work on that? We have no. Oh yeah, we can also drop one silly level. Silly me. Okay, that's not so bad. Well, that's not so bad. The harpy should be working at the blight post, probably.
Right, we deliberately played without the slower villager loss. It's working out, actually. Just use wood for this, thanks. No, not that many. Okay, event dealt with. Nobody's leaving. Not on my watch. Got tons of amber from that. What do you mean you can't make anything? Oh, I didn't enable them. That's right. Well, that's my bad. All right, so far so good. Just gonna need five pack of building materials. It'll take a little bit longer to get online. Uh, Stonecutter's camp is going over here. Guess that we... Yeah, we can reassign these people once they're done. Shouldn't be too long. Otherwise, I have no one to work with currently. Definitely going to want to get our water online soon. Um, which does require planks, which we did get. So let's get this stormwater hookup, I think, first. Actually, no, I want the food hookup first. Okay, storm is going to be a pain in the butt. Don't need to have hostility too, though, right? It's a bit better. Harpies will still be underwater here, but less so. Let's get double stone cutters. Consider a second hearth soonish. We need the rocks online first. It's pretty soon. Didn't look at trade routes very often, but yeah, there haven't been a lot of trade routes to look at. So I don't think I've cared much. Please make bricks until we have ten of them. Good talk. Granary is going to be making fabric. We can do that from reeds. Humans are best at it. Put that to 20. Links are already being made. So we have all three building materials being produced now. We should be able to make lots of stuff. Including warehouses, finally. Let's get a warehouse place next to this garbage. Make the rock collection a lot faster. This one we can probably get away without having one, but it would be faster if we did. Probably want to deal with this before we actually... about to activate the threat. We have no wood. Oh, I see, because we have no woodcutters. Oh, that's going to be an issue. Okay, hold on. First step, make sure that we can use the coal to not die. Second step. Fire the lumber mill person. Fire woodcutter person. Uh -huh. This chop stuff. 
And then third woodcutter, second woodcutter's camp is where exactly? I can't find it. Right here. Talk about how green trees are faster. Get those. Need some help. No, don't have some help. Cancel the help. What are you building? Nothing? What about here, I guess? Oh, that's why we don't have any fuel. It's the blight post, actually. You two are fired, for now. I understand the problem. Struggling a little bit here. Really struggling a little bit. <laughs> trade routes? Trade routes. Probably it's better to just take 10 amber immediately, quite frankly. Given that trade routes are going to be hard to come by. I will pick our newest set of orders now. Liver 65 grain. Or 40 oil, 40 flour. Both have a very similar impact on what they give us. I guess I'd rather deliver 65 grain. Deliver 100 drizzle water. That should be easy to do. Eat jerky 50 times. Also not that hard. Let's do this one. Just notice we have 242 food. What happened here? Good things, that's what. I haven't even turned on the water yet. Crazy. Yeah, I'm just going to take 10 amber immediately. Um... Okay, now we can have more woodcutters. Let's get that sorted. As soon as possible, preferentially. There's still so much stuff in this cache. For the water one, do we need a water storage building? We don't. We could just upgrade the geyser pump. Which will take two pipes and ten planks. And that'll increase the storage capacity. That's the easiest way to do that. More lizards, please. And we do need one more house. Preferably, we get a second hearth. Hmm. Okay, I need to make some room for that. We need a warehouse over here first. Keep the warehouse first. Barloff. Boy, am I happy to see you. Oh, you have purging fire? That's convenient. I will take your purging fire. In fact, I'll take all of your purging fire. Pipes would probably be a good idea, too. Give me four pipes. And 20 bricks. 15 planks. Anything else I want from what you have here? Ooh, tool shop. Mm, I don't think so, though. Seems pretty good. Do I ever delete resource nodes to make space? I believe I've done this exactly one time. Okay. So not really. Oh, give me back those, I guess. Don't make pipes. Anymore. We should favor these guys. So we want our parts next. Okay, 
Which one's that? This one. Next to Far Love. No, wait, what? No, we already got the parts. Um, what cache do I want to open next, then? The one with the 30 copper ore. Probably this one. That'll also give me the grain. Oh, we, we just get all the grain we need from... Yeah, we can really balloon our population. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's do this. Yes, break this open. Cool. We're going to have 30 pop in year three. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, actually. So yes, we definitely need to... Put some trees over here, then. Make some room. Now ticking down. Okay, okay. Light post is finished. Good. It all seems to be going very well at the moment. Here, we're lacking the parts currently. Oh, I see. Let's delete the harvester's camp then. Should wait. Aren't we about to get parts literally seconds from now? Yeah. There we go. Never mind. Okay, so most things are being dealt with. I'm gonna put some big shelters down over here because we're gonna have so many people joining us momentarily. Love Park. that one corner. Okay. Not these, though. Okay, too many skewers. Fair enough. You're fired. You are fired. Make a brick oven or something. Okay, we actually have to make the pack of building materials out of the makeshift post here. Please just use copper ore for this. See, we don't actually have the copper ore quite yet. We're working on it. We're about to have human influx, though, so perfect timing on the earth here. All right, welcome tons of new people. Also 15 more bricks, that's kind of cool. And 25 jerky. Gives us a new building reward. Rain mill. There's our three-star flower. We can turn all of these mushrooms into flour. 
Then we can turn all of that into pie. You got it. Brain mill is shaped weird, though. Why are you shaped so weird? Uh, two-star pack of provisions is okay. We actually should have made pack of provisions a while ago. Though I don't think we're going to use enough, so I'm just going to make them the makeshift posts. Like a fool. Harpy Hearthkeeper is definitely a good idea, actually. We should have had that a while ago. Yes, that will help these abandoned caches be less of a huge pain in the butt to empty out. I think I'm going to break this one open now. We're going to get six wildfire essence, 80 incense, 80 tea, and 60 copper ore. Uh -huh. Enjoy. Uh, is this dealt with now? Oh yeah, that's where that point came from. Okay, so now we can hook up stuff. And I vote brick oven gets hooked up because we're going to mass produce pie, which every species likes. Pie-tacular. We have a lot of unemployed people at the moment. Six of those. Yeah, we need some light post workers. water, huh? Will I build copper ore roads? Uh, that could be worth it here, actually, to, with all the copper ore we're going to get. I think that's not, uh, not a bad idea, actually. See, we have plenty of bricks. We don't need you. What do we need? A way for the harpies to not die is what we need. We favor them. They're still in the negatives here. Is the third leveled up? It's not, because one person is not living here. Terrible. Simple way to fix that, though. There we go. Now it is leveled up, so that's another plus two to everybody. Gets the harpies most of the way there. Oh, we were favoring lizards. We just unfavor the lizards and yes, favor the harpies. And then we're there. Good. Very good. All right, let's get some lizards harvesting reeds or whatever. Got lots of jobs that are available currently. And more newcomers if you want them. You know what? I dang do. Yeah, we're at 28 people year three, and I'm not even not even done yet. Once clearing glades kicks in, we'll have even more. Truly absurd. Here, please help out of the rain mill. What are we going to make pie out of? Yeah, I can make order here. So prioritize meat, then secondarily use insects and berries. Don't use herbs or eggs. Limit 100 on these things. That's a lizard job. All right, mass producing of pie begins now. Here's hoping it actually works. Plenty of purging fire. Cool. Is the prioritization a new feature? I think it might be. Yeah, I think it might be.
Do trade routes, huh? Well, that's cute. Three hundred food somehow. I think I want to know. You want flour here? It's a minute to make flour, but it takes a minute to make pie. Yeah, they'll, they'll keep up with it mostly. This seems fine. human resolve is low. Don't be ridiculous. Alright, I think it's time to cut into a new glade, because I don't have enough jobs for people. Look at this one. It's fine. Seems easy to get to. Yeah, containers, containers are hard to make. Definitely harder than flour. So I think it's part of why pickled goods have such a large bonus on them. Plus eight. Often you're quite limited in how many containers you can do. Alright, so year one... Or sorry, year three, 32 villagers. It's absolutely mental. We're mostly going to stop taking people now. Ooh, training gear. Let's take that. We can make training gear out of crystallized dew and reeds. So if we find a way to do brawling, that'll be great. Um, these are also useful for trade routes, potentially. This one, 40 more vegetables and roots. Take it. Uh -huh. 40 meat and 40 grain for each completed dangerous or forbidden glade event. Sure. Sure. I'm about to do one of those. I think it's better than 10 amber, probably. Somebody working here again. Up to it. Yeah, bu buying containers is actually pretty viable for uh, pickled goods. Something to, sp specifically for pickled goods, a, a big shout out to give is that the granary needs three pottery or three barrels, but only two water skins. I don't know why. It just really, it, I guess you get a, a better deal with the water skins. So if you can get water skins specifically, they're very easy to make. That's right, I don't need more packet building materials, thanks. talk. Although, what was the deal on that? Two pack of building materials, three pack of provisions for four amber? That's not even a good deal. I might take it anyway, though. All right, fine. I'll do it. My trader. Okay. 
Good time in the glade then. Oh yeah, we need to pick new orders. I keep forgetting to do that. Burn 18 cysts, or make 20 packet building materials. Guess maybe I did need to keep turning the copper into packet building materials. And then I shouldn't have traded it away. <laughs> hmm. Let's see if we can do 18 cysts. That sounds tough, actually, right? Well, that's very hard. Okay. Building the Citadel, it is. Six glades, ten tools. Or 50 ale and unlock tavern. Do cups and glasses. Four dangerous or forbidden glade events in 20 minutes. I just discovered two dangerous glades within quick succession. It's easier. You don't actually have to finish them. Speaking of... Wow, look at all these ruins. Holy moly. <laughs> what is this? What a glade. We got large encampment, which we can get some amber for. Plus, three ruins. Leather worker for water skin production. Furnace. We can make copper bar, bricks, and pie. And trapper's camp. Let us access to the large meat node. Harmony Spirit Altar, which is an awesome, awesome event. Wow. This is uh, good. This is very good. And a lot of coal in case we need more fuel, which actually, yeah, we do. Desperately. Desperately we do. We talk. Am I going to build a rain collector or upgrade the geyser pump? It depends on if we can get more pipes. Yeah, we can. So we're going to upgrade the pipe, uh, the pump, is what we're going to do. We have 100 pie? Amazing. Good work, us. Hmm. What do we want here? Take eight more pipes. I have to hook some more stuff up. I'm buy all of your clothing. I think coats are one of the things that's more reasonable to buy because they're quite cheap usually. They take forever to make. So buying them is often worth it. You save all the production time. Um, anything else that I want here? Really need more planks. Oh, that's where our wood is going. That makes sense. Find the ale we need for the cups and glasses quest is reasonable. Do that. Give me one plank. Alright, where's my lumber mill? I'm gonna stop lumbering immediately. I'm gonna fuel for this. Please and thank you. Okay, so now we can upgrade that pump thing. This. Yeah, let's use 10 planks. Did we get tool shop? I don't think we did. No, we looked at tool shop and decided not to. Because we're breaking open the caches. Rather than opening them. We're sending them to the Citadel. That was our choice. Oh yeah, that's part of why we have so much pie. The humans are still resentful that they're not allowed to touch the pie. 
But now that it has properly cooled on the windowsill, have at, humans. Dinky humans. Yeah, I wanted to re-enable packet building materials here. Just with the copper. Get all the caches. Looks like I got all of them. <laughs> so much pie. <laughs> but why so much pie, though? What was I doing? Mining. We're mining now. Hmm. Let's see. This is real now. Job for lizards. Cutters. Make some more room around the warehouse, thanks. Yeah, the humans are praying. Pretty well. This is going pretty well. I think I want newcomers at this time. We have so many people already. At least we're finally positive on wood for a while. Help out on the drizzle pump for a bit. Beat up the water delivery requests. Harpies are not making much rep at this point. Better to try to make the humans happy. Is this no pause? No, I'm just pausing not that much at the moment. I think no pause queen's hand could be pretty challenging in a good way. I only ran out of rocks. Cool, we can de deconstruct that then. Consider hooking this furnace back up, or we can just salvage it, actually. What am I going to make at the furnace? Nothing. Salvage it. Give me some bricks. And 15 copper ore, which makes more building materials. This is our water delivery. 20 copper bars, 30 coal, and we won't run out of fuel again. Good. Can this be times two now? Yes, could. That'll level up Smoldering City again. Okay. What about Leather Worker? Can also salvage this for a bunch of stuff. I do not have leather, so it doesn't seem like we can make water skins, which makes this place pretty useless. Unless I really want the two-star pigment. No, I can do that at, manu at the manufacturing. So yeah, salvage this too. Please and thank you. Tear those down. Greater threat is going to be active, so we definitely have to have less woodcutters now. Okay, we can still run three woodcutters during the storm. That's not too bad. We're getting close to the point where things are going to be nasty. Very nasty. Ooh, 
metal shop is back. I've got a lot of, I've got a lot of metal. So we can make a bunch of tools for cash use if we wanted to. Two star pipes as well. Or I could maybe make biscuits. I've got a hundred flour. Yeah, let's make biscuits. Let's do biscuits. Cool. All is going well. Almost consider taking more people at the moment. We have 600 food? What is happening? <laughs> this settlement is absurd. It's like the bakery, too. Let's drizzle water also. Drizzle water. Lizard still haven't figured out that they're not happy, even though the storm is almost over. Maybe they'll get it eventually, but I'm not sure. Don't seem very smart. Maybe. Make sure we're prioritizing the whole consumption at this point. and says, what would I think if the secondary resources from nodes didn't weren't a percentage, but instead were some kind of guaranteed progress or output? Might be nice. A little weird having to rely on random rolls, but I don't mind the way it works one bit. Uh, with, with how many resources you gather in a typical game, they're kind of the same thing under most circumstances. Hmm. Seems like the next storm is going to be tough. Ten amber per trader. I'll take it. That's better than just taking ten amber, right? Obviously, it must be. Might summon a trader this year. So we're baking biscuits. So we've got lots of pie. Viewers seem like they're going down. We can just hook up the water. Lots of drizzle water to use. Um, we just need a few more blueprints. We have one last order to pick. Let's pick that. Utopia. Everyone must be satiated on pie and skewers and jerky at the same time. We'll get 30 tools for that? That's kind of absurd. Feel the need for brawling? I'd like to do that. Construction work is fun. Does impatience have a negative consequence beyond losing at 14? It actually gives you a bonus as you get more of it. Uh, minus 15 hostility per point of impatience. This fulfilling the need for jerky is not going to be that hard. You get 60 biscuits too. Cute. 
Crater. Three minutes, 45 seconds, really? Yikes. Untowards is what that is. Most improper. Need some points. Is what I need. I guess that means we need to open some new glades if I want to get points, huh? Don't do that anymore. I'll play. In quick succession, yeah, we're good. we're gonna do it. Figure it out. Just need a service building, really, and we're and we're good. We have the goods built up. What we don't have is the way to actually turn it into resolve, by the way. I guess we want them to be in quick succession. We should towards them in a similar time frame here. Annoying, but easily enough bribed with our food. We do want the point from chasing them away. Although that will spawn fishman totems spiking our hostility. Which we can't do through the storm. That would be very bad. More large rock nodes are good. Sixty pottery in here. Kind of cool. And the other one. Might just bribe these. Easier to do, certainly. Increase global food production speed by 20%. If I didn't have 700 food, that would be pretty tempting. I will take heavy millstone for plus two to flower production so that we can keep up with the flower more easily. By and large, you don't have things that I want, though. You mostly have food. Good talk. Probably summon another trader after you leave then. Lysazime, thanks for the prime sub in 31 months. I'm glad I'm glad people are enjoying Bellatro. Like I said, I do really like the concepts at work in that game. I think it's well well thought out. 
I just don't enjoy it in practice. Okay, we still have two minutes to cut into that glade. There it is. We get 20 pipes for that, too. Is that another fisherman cave? <laughs> okay, we got a service uh, building, though. Market and forum. Leisure education or luxury treatment. Uh, one of the passives. Public lectures is 15% chance of double yields. That's very good. Bearing capacity is kind of cool, too. Let's go forum. Then the humans can drink their ale. Hope they like it. Yes, that is another fisherman cave. Smoke house, more incense, and more pie. Cool. I can chase away both of them. I can't chase away both of them at the same time. That'd be insane. It's already going to be a hard enough uh, year. Should probably build a third hearth. do that. Cool. Any other resource nodes that are not being appropriately gathered? We have lots of large stone nodes now. We need a warehouse. Next to both of these. Okay. Life in the mines. Good. Good. Oh, yeah, I wanted to take the newcomers. We could educate our harpies somehow. Uh, I definitely meant to summon a traitor. Let's do that now. Traitor, traitor, traitor. You. Summon. Will give us another half point of impatience, which can be a good thing. I forgot to check if Sahild had jerky. Congrats on beating the A20 heart with the uh, ironclad too, license time. Can definitely be a tough challenge. Ooh, minus 50 hostility. There we go. And half a point of rep. Take that one too. Thanks. Okay, that makes our life quite a bit easier here. Would you like a bunch of parts? Lord, those are valuable. I have given Bellatro a try. I don't intend to come back to it. But I did try it. people here. We have way too many people here. That's not a real big shelter, though. Good enough. Hmm. 
Very good. Very, yeah. Okay, sweet. Life. How's it going, Andrew? Go. I'm playing with um. I'm playing with pause. No pause feels like the appropriate way to escalate the challenge. But with how the game is designed, like, given that at the end of the storm, many things happen at the exact same time, it just seems kind of annoying. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think I would actually enjoy playing No Pause. So I haven't really felt the need to try it yet. Hmm. Money? Money. Wait. I wasn't supposed to do that, was I? No, I was not. To the manufactory! Make some training gear, thanks. Alright, hopefully everyone is happy. Don't go to greater threat, thank you. When is the third hearth necessary? Anytime you really, really need more global resolve or less hostility. It's another minus 30 hostility, but it means even more fuel consumption. So that's the real challenge is keep it fueled. Can you do it? Spawn how often? Every 60 seconds. Okay. Kind of get close here. I'm really cutting it close. Yeah, it's also nice to be able to cut down rest time. That's true. Because everybody ultimately has to go to a hearth to rest. So the other benefit of having another hearth is that you can reduce the travel time there, which can be very important if you are particularly spread out, indeed. I have a huge deal, in fact. One woodcutter. Okay, let's chase these fools away. The wait. The other one has a different timer, right? Oh, this is the faster one. Oh, dear. Okay, do this one first. These are almost done. This will be delivered in a second. Okay. And yes, Harpy Hearthkeeper. Good luck, everyone. as well. Let's see. Yeah, let's confirm this one too. Well, wait a few seconds. Okay, now I'll do that one. Okay, we're going to have a lot of totems. Basically, our entire next year, at least initially, is going to be dealing with totems. Um, that'll be fun. We should be able to win during year six here. I think that's very reasonable considering our position. Um, but I will need to summon another trader at the start of the year. Yes. 
Hostility reduction, sure. Do I even have that much money? Not really. But I have 900 food, so surely I can trade stuff. Surely, surely, surely. Trade route. There. Call. All right, I think we're beating both of these. That timer's being beat. This timer is being beat. Yeah, we're good. None of this is jerky. This porridge. You may be traded with meat. Thanks. Okay. Oh, that's right, we have a smokehouse. Smokehouse can make jerky. Of course. We build that. We can put that together, actually. Getting weird. Nice man! Thanks for the Prime sub. Forget about Twitch Prime. We'll take newcomers. Need more woodcutters. Facility 7. Get a fisherman totem? There's one. This one too. Tools! Let's do this. Give me all of the tools that you have. Also, I should probably let the humans drink themselves. Silly. So, you two are done. Wait, okay. So we're gonna get one point, two point, three and a half more points. Hostility will end at some point. We need more lizards to fulfill the need for skewers. It's not going to happen. Hmm. Scribe. Let's see. I think we have this. Tavern, there we go. Okay, sweet. That's definitely going to be your six win then. Beautiful. Okay, we can stop cutting wood so aggressively. Yeah, enable the alcohol. Drink yourselves silly. Okay, 
Okay, that cave is done. Everyone gives three global resolve when manned. It also gives two global resolve because of the Harmony Spirit Altar. And instantly lets us complete that quest. The points are soaring. Okay, what's left? Not much. Uh, we're going to win through reputation before the season's out. Sweet. Speed it up then. Beat it up. Yeah, just a thousand food, no biggie. What a prosperous settlement. Ridiculously so. GG. Not even entirely sure why that went so well. But it sure did. Give me seal fragments, thank you. And that was Glademire. What a time. What a time. So the next settlement is going to be here in the Royal Woodlands. We're going to get 44 machinery from one settlement. Holy crap. Excuse me. That is actually insane. And I think what that means is that if I do Royal Woodlands here and then play next to the Gathering Storm, I believe that means we'll be able to buy... Two fundamental upgrades immediately. So we can either go double cornerstone pool increase or one cornerstone pool and one blueprint upgrade. Any particular aims for this queen's hand run? Just to have fun with it. I think it's the only goal I really set for myself on this one. See if we can get the third consecutive win. Uh, and if so, I'll probably put down the game until we get another species added. No fertile soil, no refunds. A little bit late here. I don't feel like I've gotten quite enough time for another settlement. So I think, Twitch chat, that is where I'm going to wind down tonight's show. We are going to be back at it tomorrow, of course. Trying to rebuild our streak in Slay the Spire, as well as playing some more FTL faster than late is the plan for tomorrow. Then more Queen's Hand later in the week. As a heads up, there will not be a Friday stream this week. I'm going to be off on Friday. See you later, Cham Scampy, Ripnator, Die Dirty Bum Die, Vassinor, and everybody else. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, my friends, stay cozy and have a good one. Doodaloo.